Warning. Punks at the Cinema contains coarse language, blood, gore, drugs, and nudity. Any people, including family, friends, and celebrities, are impersonated by us and done so very, very poorly. So due to this content, this podcast should not be listened to by anyone ever. Thank you. I mean, nobody wants to admit the nine cans of ravioli, but I did. I'm ashamed of myself. But the first can doesn't count, and then you get to the second, and then the third, and the fourth and fifth, I think I burned with the blowtorch, and then I just kept eating. Howdy ho, you punks and fiends out there. Welcome to another augmented episode of Punks at the Cinema, a podcast where a few buds sit around, crack over a few cold ones, and rip on a praise of some of our favorite movies we've loved growing up with, along with brand new movies that have come out to theaters and being streamed on streaming services, or old movies that we've never fucking seen before. Tonight, folks, we are talking about Shin Kamen Rider Whoa. from 2023. Shit. And before we get going, ignore that voice, because I am your Thank augmented you. Captain Tyler Nightmare, and to the front of me is augmented Big Dingus. Man, I am augmented as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you better get your jeans fixed, dog. <laughs> and to the left of me is the augmented Scott. Hello. Hello, Scott. How are you? Augmented. Damn right you are. <laughs> And coming back for the third time, Yay! we have Augmented Mike. I got augmented in another city for this. <laughs> Damn it. Damn right you did. So you didn't get dragged, but you got augmented? No, I came voluntarily, but I'm now heavily augmented. <laughs> I'm like 13% flesh now. Whoa. Damn. whoa. What's the other fucking... Yeah, you do your math, Tyler. 87%? <laughs> yes, sir. Metal. Metal as augmented fuck. metal. Metal as fuck. I don't know maps, so <laughs> Nah, me neither. I failed school. I never went to school. I skipped all the time to go smoke weed and get drunk. So I just did that and then went to school afterward. Yeah. <laughs> afterward? How do you go afterward? You gotta still get gone? that education. Carefully. Yeah, right. I was in all AP classes, but I still went to class stoned. High school's nothing. <laughs> like yeah. it's makes sense. So boys, yeah. a little bit. How you guys all been doing? We've Pretty terrific. Uh, we we've just been busy. Um, you know, it's like, uh, well, I mean, so I, originally we were supposed to do massive talents of uh, what was the film again? <laughs> the unbearable uh, weight of massive uh, talents. Yeah, yes, yes. Which we still probably will. Yeah, we we eventually will do it, but um, will we though? Yeah, That's yes. up to you, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're the one that decided to do that. Yeah, movie. it's still my pick. Well, and plus you were work you were working, so like you started yep. a new job, so. Um, no, so we went with plan B and I said, let's do Shin Kamen Rider because I have been waiting for this movie ever since they announced it. Swing. Swash. What if you get that? that. Swash. What is swash? Um, it's the sound that Ultraman makes when he does his, uh, Spacium 133 beam where he goes, Swash. All right, that's why I don't know because I don't watch Ultraman. So. It's, it's, it's also what he says dude. when he comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, swash! <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> she said swash. Yes. Swash. How about my other boys over here? How you guys been doing? I told you. I didn't hear Terrific. you. I'm right. lost in the swash right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lost in the swash. I'm lost in the swish. All right. It's all fucking dirty. Yeah, so liquor. uh. How'd you hear about this movie originally, John? So they announced it. Um, so originally it was announced because it was Common Writer's 50th anniversary. And it was it was another project that uh, Hideko Anu wanted to do. Um, so that's the reason why they initiated this project and they released it later on in 2023. Um, because originally the 50th anniversary would have been um, in 2021. But with COVID and stuff, that's why it got pushed back. So that's um, their whole reason of that. And it got released till now. So, uh, but yeah, I, I didn't actually hear about the release until like maybe 2022. Um, I didn't even know this shit was coming out at all. Yeah, so I was <laughs> yeah. very... Just, just found out. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was excited. And when I saw that um, it was going to be premiering in the States for one premiere day... I said, "Hey, Mike, you want to watch a Tokusatsu movie?" He's like, "Yeah, you know what? Let's let's watch it." 
And then Tyler's like, well, we got to do an episode now because uh, Scott's Scott didn't answer it. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. My bad about that. <laughs> Scott didn't answer it. Uh, um, we, we need to do a movie, John. And I was like, okay. I wasn't even working either. That well, day. you weren't <laughs> feeling no well either. Yeah, and I wasn't <laughs> feeling well either. I just felt like shit. Honestly. So don't blame it all on the Scott. No, I know. I, 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 I still wasn't coming either way. So. <laughs> That's what she said. Oh, shit. That's what she said. But um, after that... Uh, that's when I said, you know what, Shin nice. Common, Common Rider is coming out, so let's fucking do this one because I really wanted to do That's Shin Common Rider. I think it was only out this week, right? This week and then Monday, June 5th. Well, we're not going to do shit Monday. No, so I said we're doing it. Yeah, right. I agreed because I figured my ignorance would make a good bit. I don't know anything about this entire <laughs> genre. So. Oh, I'm prepared. I haven't even seen the fucking movie. So. I don't know Jack. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, Sky hasn't seen the movie. but I'm just s- here for comedic relief. I've and, seen uh, the movie, and I still feel like I don't know Jack about questions. it. Yeah, it's got, it's got, Spoil- I feel like- <laughs> Should we do a spoiler alert now? <laughs> spoiler alert. How about you don't, ladies and gentlemen, Scotty do? Or we do that. <laughs> Nah, I'm hoping Sky will ask some questions to help us think more about this movie, at least. Can we get bumped up a little bit? Uh, yeah. Sorry, I can't hear myself that well. Oh. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Oh, I hear you clear as okay, day. Okay, because I don't hear, like, any of you guys. Oh, let me do that. I hear John <laughs> I hear John now, but I don't hear myself. Hey-o! Really, you don't hear yourself? I don't hear my... Wait. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Is that the voices in your head? Do I or... <laughs> okay. Oh, no, I've got the... I think it's... I'm just fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> to the surprise of no one who has ever known me, I'm just fucking dumb. Here, it's gonna be the best night. Ever. Wrong one. I'm sorry. Well, I'll turn everyone up then, like on their in ears. Yeah, Craig gets up. Yeah, I can hear all you pretty well. Turn up. I can't hear myself that well. All right. Put a timestamp on that. You might have to edit. Uh, some it's shit okay. Out. No, no. Well, nah, right. this shit's raw. We always do it raw, dog, motherfucker. I mean, you do it raw, dog. People like that we don't edit shit out anyway, so. Uh, you do it raw, dog. Why just will make sit punks at the cinema? Uh, but, um, so. Whose uh, nuts are coming off? <laughs> my nuts. I hope mine are. Okay. Off of are you offering me a vasectomy right now? Not for free. I mean, that'll help that's, the That's world. a given, but are you offering me... Yeah. <laughs> no, unironically. Unironically. No, not unironically. Uh, no, I mean, wait, yes. Yeah, unironically. Man. I want... No, dude. God damn, I'm drunk. I've been hoping for a vasectomy <laughs> since I was fucking 18, but I haven't been <laughs> able go to Go get one! Dude, you know how hard it is to find it? No, li- literally, this is a problem. If Does state insurance pay for that? Yes, it will. <laughs> what? Gen- generally speaking, but no, yeah. the, the problem is finding a doctor who will do it if you're young and don't already have kids, because they talk, they'll try to talk Plus- you the fuck out of it. Every single doctor you go why? to, will, it's because, reversible. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't get why. Well, I do get why, but I'm not going to rant about it. They just but, don't want to. <laughs> they just they don't. They just don't want to be fucking with your dick. <laughs> no, it's like, dude, it's a, don't do that. I don't want to put said. my hands. Down it's there. unfortunate. No, no, I've been I've been wanting one for a long fucking time, but I can't find somebody who'll do it. I know somebody. Cheap. What if you just get kicked in the ball <laughs> so many nah, times? No, that's what I've been wearing tight pants and drinking Mountain Dew my whole life because I'm really fucking hoping that I can like <laughs> accidentally stereo- chemically castrate myself. The, hoping the old the old myths are true. Huh? I was about, I, mean, about I don't Mountain know Dew. I don't know, dude. I'm like resorting to anything possible at this point. Like hey. I even had a little bit of a testicular cancer scare, and then Ooh. I got relieved because I was like, shit, if my balls die, I can just get rid of them. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> if they're cancerous, they gotta get rid of them. They can't say no. <laughs> Do they just castrate you? I fucking no? hope so. So I grew up watching Sex in the City, and anybody who's watched really? that shit, yeah, I did, yeah, because of my mom. Tune in next week when we won't have an episode. <laughs> Actually, I, we won't. But no, anybody who's <laughs> seen that knows about Steve and how he his whole thing about testicular who cancer. Who is Steve? There's a character on the show whose name is Steve. He ends up with oh. testicular cancer, ends up with one ball, gets made fun of it, and he gets a prosthetic uh, testicle. As he should. Nah, I just, he should. I just want them gone, dude. I don't care. Yeah. Prosthetics no. be damned. I just want them gone. Well, what are you going to do with them when they're gone? <laughs> that, you keep them no, in a jar no, like there a is planet no, terror? There is no do with them. There's get Probably. fucking rid of yeah. them and never think about it again. Well, you don't want to collect balls? No. <laughs> Why not? I don't even want to have balls. I don't want to have them on my body. What the fuck do I want those for? I thought your best friends are balls. So Tyler, true. you said that. So Tyler, you did say that. There is some this little thing have, called lying. Some of his best friends are balls. <laughs> this is a little thing called. Is it a white lie or a thin white line? Lying, <laughs> not lines. Yeah, there's a white lie, and there's a thin white lie. You said line. Did I? You did. I'm thinking of cocaine. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what? What have we been watching? Let's talk about. Yeah, that. let's get into that no. shit. 
Well, oh, oh, my bad, my bad. No, we're going to do voicemails first. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, that's right. Wait, we're doing the voicemails first? Yes, we are. Oh, well, okay. Well, I guess just so that some of the fans and shit, so they get their voices heard on the show, we decided we're going to play the voicemails at the beginning of the show, just so that people can listen to it if they don't want to stay for the whole fucking thing for a bunch of fucking Boy, assholes. Sure. Um, <laughs> this one's from Texas Toast. This is my guy, Texas Toast. It's actually more a Scotch guy, but... It's my guy now. I love this guy. <laughs> All right, Texas Toast, here we go. Yo, it's Texas Toast, y'all. I'm so fucking thrilled y'all played my little voicemail, man. That's pretty awesome. Uh, just listen to your uh, Guardians of the Galaxy episode there, man. Uh, you know, I'm glad you guys covered it. You guys did pretty good. Now I don't have to watch it. I'm not really, you know, I gave up <laughs> on the superhero movies. They're never going to stop, guys. They're never going to stop making them, which is good for y'all. Plenty of episodes to come, I'm sure. But, yeah, no, I think y'all guys probably covered it pretty good because, I mean, I feel like I got some talking points. And, yeah, it uh, sounds good. But, yeah, uh, I look forward to more of what y'all doing. I got to say, though, man, um, you know, it's all love. I love all you guys, and I love the show. And I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. But don't ever publicly tell people that you watched something four times and yeah, cried right. all four times, especially when that something is a cartoon. Rodent. He's talking to you, you know Ty. Don't ever tell me how I'm kinda, supposed to respond to a cartoon. Oh, well, look what we're going to look at on that one. But, you know. No, man, I'm just playing with you, man. No, I love the show. You guys are fucking awesome. And um, I look forward to seeing what y'all do next, man. Hopefully something a little uh, older. I do want to say I do prefer, like, the more older movies. New movies feel cookie cutter, you know. I like the older ones better. So, for sure, man, keep it so up. Boondock Saints, sure. for example. Oh, the fucking great episode you guys did, man. You guys had the, you know, it was great. But anyways, man, I'm rambling now, so I'm going to shut the fuck up and get the fuck off the <laughs> phone, man. Y'all fucking, you know, keep doing your thug fizzles. Texas out. So I wonder who was uh I wonder who was crying four times during the movie. <laughs> that, right. that was our boy Tyler. It sounds like I'm going first. For one, I didn't see the movie four times. I saw it twice. <laughs> First time I saw it, I cried three times. Four oh, times. I, the we'll second still, time, we'll I cried four times. Listen, listen, I'm a huge animal lover. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a zoologist, so I just I just love animals, and that backstory breaks my fucking heart. So. Wait, what movie was this? Go, it's a, fuck yourself, Texas. But I love film. you, dog. You're the best dude we got listening. Hey, come on. It was uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, the third yeah. one. Yep. Have you watched that yet? No. No? Pretty no, good, no, pretty I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much sharing Texas Toast's views on superhero movies. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We, we all kind of do now a little bit. But Cut the cookie cutter? Just, I'm kind of just over them. Yeah. Well, he said the cookie cutter was for, for like, the most new part. movies. I mean, I guess that it's still a new movie. Yeah, it is. But, like, I think he means, like, just new movies in general feel cookie cutter because they just copy and paste a lot of old movies that they're trying to be influenced off of. Yeah. But they're not yeah. making their own views and imaginations on film. No, you, you know what they say, though? There's only, like, three real stories, and everything else is just combinations and rehashings of those. What are those three stories? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not they. I don't fucking know. All right. Uh, who else we got? Who else called well, in? Well, thank you, t- thank you, Toast. Appreciate it. Yeah, I was going to say, wait, does hey, anyone yeah, else want to input I, on I, Like, honestly, the fact that we have people calling now is one thing that I've just been really appreciating and grateful about because there's people that are listening to these episodes like it gives us it gives me that energy to continue pursuing on with this because it's a project that you know i wanted to do for a long time and so now like i have one of my good friends on here um trying to bring other people on here it's just like amazing that people are actually enjoying like what we're doing here yeah. And oh, I'm getting yeah. a disgustingly selfish sense of pride from knowing that I didn't ruin the Boondock Saints episode. <laughs> <laughs> Debatable. I mean, it is, no, but no. I'm going to take this as evidence in my favor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was a wrong drop. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who, who else called in? All right, we got <laughs> Mr. Tacky. Uh, the return of Mr. Tacky. Who the fuck? Oh, I just found out about geez. Mr. Tacky. I'm still getting in on the lore. Here we go. Let's hit it. Well, this is Mr. Taki. Okay. And, uh, I, I was gonna call in about the movies and everything. And, uh, because the movies are great. They everything you've been doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Silly. And, uh, but, uh, uh, what is this about the, the, uh, would you call in on the voicemail? Uh, they talk about butt plugs and things. Uh, Johnny? Johnny. If you want butt plugs, uh, 
Just hit me up. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah, just, just, just kidding. being silly. <laughs> but uh, why don't you guys do uh, something about him, <laughs> Bubba? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. What? Tacky, you fucking wild goose! You, what? you, wild you silly goose! You wild Why do I feel like he's not kidding? Yeah, he's, he's, he's I, think, a weirdo. I think Mr. Tacky's lying. Uh, Mr. Tacky is not kidding. He hits me up like every day. Really? <laughs> I bet he does. And he asks me about John's butt plug. So sounds like, like hey, you got to hit up John about that. Sounds like an interesting life. It is. So I mean, uh, he says it is. <laughs> oh, how do you feel about those butt plugs, John? He's never given me any butt plugs, so I don't know what you're talking what? about. What? Mr. Tacky didn't hit you up about that? Hell no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, hit I, him I, up I think at. He did. Hit up John <laughs> at mrbuttplugs at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's a that's a wild shit, ass. Yeah, we should get that commercial. That's a wild back. ass email that's plugs with a Z. <laughs> 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 Wild ass fucking email got, address, hey, mrbuttplugs at gmail.com. We definitely got to get that uh, commercial. Uh, as a drop. Did we ever record that? I think I we just said it live. You got to get that as a domain name. <laughs> I think, I mean, Do what they did with Goatsy and start giving email addresses out of it. Hey, they're the, uh, yeah, that's pretty bad. We haven't supported that sponsor in a while. I mean, we should probably bring that sponsor back. <laughs> yeah, so there's another weirdo that called in, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, bad boy Jimmy Morrison. Oh, yeah. man, this guy. So let's, This guy threatened my life. <laughs> <laughs> Via suplex. This guy's threatened my life on multiple occasions. So let's... <laughs> Let's what, hear what bad boy baby Bernard Morrison has to say. Listen to me, yeah. You guys call yourself funks at the cinema. I'm only funky, and you guys don't even let me on your goddamn show. That's fucking yeah, lie. Yeah, you might have told me to come on a couple times or whatever, but I was too high. I didn't realize it. But you know what? You never even let me on again after that, so fuck off. Sons of bitches. And John, stop putting butt plug shit on the goddamn the intro. Side. What the fuck? Fuck and another you. thing, it's Crusher Fest today. We're celebrating Crusher in Milwaukee. You fuckbags, you nerds. You ain't gonna check in a packet. <laughs> I'm going to live the real life of wrestling. I'm just playing. Have a good <laughs> podcast. Well, actually, no, I hope it sucks. Fuck you, John. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, fuck you, John. Look at this man. This fucking disgusting man takes no responsibility for his own being too high to pick up the phone. What a douchebag. What a fucking douchebag. Oh, shit. Is there anything that you would man. like to do to him in particular? Like suplex, perhaps? I don't even want to touch him. You hear that, Bernard? <laughs> fuck you, Bernard. Damn. He said, fuck you, Bernie. Hey, hold on. He's got one more before we continue Again? with his conversation. Oh, shit. And another thing, Ted <laughs> Diabasi and fucking Hulk Hogan, they're a bunch of bitches, dude. That's it. Oh God, that's <laughs> What's it. your problem with Ted Diabasi? Get, call in and let us know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a wrestling fan, so I don't even know who the fuck that is. I know who Hulk Hogan is. Call in and I teach mean, yeah. me about <laughs> wrestling so I can <laughs> understand why you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So who who wants to say words to bad boy baby Bernard Morris? Well, my first one is fuck you, James. <laughs> oh, using the legal off. name for one. Fuck name. you, Jim. <laughs> fuck you, Jim. <laughs> fuck you, James. And I can talk about my butt plugs all I want. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna let that one stand. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, I'll tell you one thing though, I'm not doing anything unless I get a bottle of liquor in front of me. I don't care what happens. That's right, Jim. I ain't doing I ain't going to band practice when you give me a bottle of liquor. <laughs> My face hurts too much from that. No, it doesn't. Don't lie. It hurts from I... all that laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so so you guys got any words for Bernard or no? Well, Fuck you. I mean, <laughs> Mike's already put his, his words. And another thing. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing. And another thing. Fuck you. Why the fuck does it take you so long to deliver on promises, James? And when and when you do, and when you fucking deliver on them, why do you have Gabe do it for you? Damn. You incapable bitch. Damn. Oh, he's gonna call back in for a shirt. Now. I hope so. I, I hope so. I don't I, talk for no reason. I want a response. <laughs> yeah, uh, Bernard, I'm not going to Crusher Fest because I'd rather go to a show that's like literally kitty corner from the house and go jam out to our local friends' bands anyway. Bad. That we kind of were supposed to play, but I mean, we got, a I think we got asked, but I think we just dropped out. I don't know. Because we're going to Indianapolis next week anyway, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to be out of town. I'm going to be out of town. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. 
I'm just going to scream. Is this man really calling baby? Trying no. To. Trying to? It's not even on speaker. He's probably not even going to answer. He didn't He's answer at that. Fest. He don't even know your fucking phone number. Yeah, he does. He called me at work. Yeah, he called me at work. <laughs> Dude, he's not. So he answer. shouldn't know your phone number then. He's probably not going to answer. For what the all... hell is this? What the hell is that? A- actually, boys, this is going to be such side talk right now. But I was listening to the Trailerborg Boys podcast today, one of their old episodes, uh-huh. and they had Randy on the show, and they were calling. Oh. The, they were calling the Burger King Corporation to see if they can get Randy free cheeseburgers for life, and they got him a card. <laughs> This man's really calling in. He's probably not even going to answer. We're going to find out. The, don't let the phone number go on again. Yeah, don't do that because then it's going to suck. Please leave your No, hang just, up, just, hang just up. Turn that shit up. All right, since Bernard didn't answer, and I'll see him in a couple of days. Boys, let's get on with what we've been watching this week. Hey, what you been watching? Bah. Let's start with Augmented Dingus over here. I have a <laughs> list. I hope you do. So, to start off with my movies that I have seen, I have seen the Super Mario Brothers movie once again. Well, we already recorded that. Same. I, well, I, I wanted to watch it again. Yeah, I watched Loser. it. Loser! So, Nerd. suck it. Nerd. Um, the second movie that I have watched is all is actually One Piece Red, which was the latest installment to the One Piece franchise of their films. Is that the live action one or no? No, it is not. Um, this was part of the storyline of what's going on in the One Piece franchise, but I don't know what time it's supposed to be. But um, yeah, I gave up on that. Show. I, I watched. I watched that. Um, the second movie that I watched this week was Godzilla King of the Monsters 2019 because yes! the fourth, that just popped up on my memories because the fourth anniversary was actually this past week yes so I watched that and it was on Wednesday I didn't watch it because of the fourth anniversary I watched it because of G Fest and just trying to catch up on like my um monster movies just trying to watch it again man I love that fucking movie um for TV series, uh, I'm going to start with uh, Recess because Mike and I have been continuing to watch oh, that. It's been like two months. months. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't yeah, watch. Yeah, we kind of took a break. We take Actually, breaks. it's been three months. That was back in March. Yeah, we take breaks. We don't we don't try to like uh, you know do the shit you do. <laughs> Losers. Yeah, usually it's just if we end up both free on a Friday, we watch Recess. We don't try to plan it out. Scandalous. <laughs> Um, the other series that I finally started watching and I'm just about caught up with is Prehistoric Planet, and I really do enjoy Prehistoric Planet. Was that on Apple TV? Yes, it was. Okay, I heard about that. It's a good series. It's really good, especially when they talk about how Carnotaurs mate. That was funny as fuck. What? Carnotaurs. They're like um, a... 15 foot high like carnivore um okay i was just making sure you were saying the word right yeah and <laughs> they have these little dinky <laughs> arms and the way that the males try to mate with the females or they try to you know be accepted by a female is like they swing their little arms up and they, their arms are useless but they use it as like part of their mating call so you've upgraded from puppet porn to dino porn yes <laughs> exactly it's about freaking time we too. have to let danger dan know um to finish off i watched spider-man into the spider-verse to lead up into all watching just the other night with mike and a few friends it was last night yeah, the other that's the other night last night. <laughs> that's last night. The last other last night. night. Yeah, the other last night. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> to watch to watch Spider Man um across the Spider Verse. No, yeah, I can't wait to watch that. That movie mwah, Chef's yeah. Kiss. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, that's what's up. That's it. That's all I got though. Ten out of ten? Mm, I can't talk about that. Oh. Alrighty. The Scott, what you got, my guy? Snooze oh. fest. No, uh, so he probably, I don't watched, know. he probably watched Aladdin again. <laughs> no, I, I, I haven't seen Aladdin in a while. <laughs> but, it, was, uh, it was the new Little Mermaid. No, I haven't seen that yet either. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, no, uh, oh, fuck. Uh, I was just thought of a new one that I didn't have on my list, though. But it was that kid, or that Superman kid or whatever. He's, like, evil as fuck. Oh, Brightburn. Brightburn, yeah. I just watched James it. Gunn, we did that as a, um, a game on the show last episode. Oh, for real? James, yeah, I just watched that movie. Yeah, James Gunn wrote that, that movie. That was a pretty good movie. I gotta watch that. Did you like it? Yeah, I liked it. I, I thought he was gonna, like, grow up or something. It was like, he was gonna be an evil kid at first, and then he, like, gets older or something, but no. No, like, they just keep keep him as a kid. Yeah, so that was actually kind of disappointing. <laughs> yeah, there's up but, and downs to that movie, I agree. But it was a good movie, though. But other than that, I watch like the Y Files on YouTube again. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be I stay watching that. The X Files ripoff? No, no. Y Files. I'm just kidding. No, they, he, like dude like talks about like conspiracies and then he'll like debunk them with facts at the end. Yeah. But while he's talking about the conspiracies, he's like you know saying it as if he believes it at first. You know, but some things you know are weird on that fucking show. And then he's right? like, Nah, fuck this. No, no, not all, but not all the time. Not all the time. Right. But it's a pretty good show. But then, other than that, baseball. Baseball. And potato porn. <laughs> Who's in the lead in baseball, the Scott? <laughs> Not the Cubs. <laughs> <laughs> How are the Brewers doing? They're they're in first place, but they're not. Go they're, Brewers! They're not that great. Uh, we're but Wisconsin. I love my Brewers. Place. You're uh, just you're uh, just bastards. a you're just a hater. I got some, I got a little hometown love for the Brewers, but. Hometown Wisconsin. Dog. Fuck him. Fuck him. Mike. What up? What you got that you've been watching, my dog? So my list overlaps three items with Johnny's list. Uh, I've been watching Recess because that's, that's an us thing. Uh, also, tonight's movie, Shin Kamen Rider, that I saw in preparation for this. Well, <laughs> Not something I would have watched we're, otherwise. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. So. Uh, and then also Across the Spider-Verse, which was pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Um, I started watching, what was it the other day? Uh, I think it was on Netflix, a movie called La Huesera. It's a movie about some pregnant woman who goes oh! and tries to get, like, witches to help with some curse or some shit. I didn't finish it. My friends at A Cut Above just recently reviewed that oh. movie, and it sounds really interesting. It's on Shudder now, and I still need to... Oh, it's probably... Yeah, Shudder. I, I need to watch that, but I just... I haven't... I've been lazy with my No, nah, I, I wasn't really digging it. It was cool for a little bit, but it kept, like... I, I don't know. I'm really picky about a lot of little shit, and a lot of little shit kept piling up by the mm-hmm. like 38 minute mark. I was like, Nah, I'm gonna just gonna, just gonna shut this one off. Oh, so you didn't even finish it? No, I didn't even finish it. No. Oh. Dang. From what I hear, it sounds like it gets really crazy at the end. Oh, maybe I'll go back to it then. Yeah, you should probably finish it. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I still have to even fucking watch said. it. No, I, I do have a habit of just dropping something once it like loses, you know, once I, it I crosses think it, a certain threshold of annoyance, I just turn it off. If I'm correct, I believe it won an award at the Fangoria Texas. Uh, um, um, not not uh, not Texas. Uh, just Chainsaw Awards. Okay. Like Fangoria does that yearly, um, kind of like the Oscars or shit. Okay. But it's just for horror movies only, and they give like these Chainsaw Awards. And I think Hosera won one of those awards. Oh. If I'm correct, wow. I don't remember. Oh, I hadn't heard anything about it. It's been a couple of weeks since I watched that. Yeah. Uh, last things. I've just been listening to some podcasts. Um, watching some Michael Parenti lectures because I'm stupid and politics brained. Who the and fuck is that? I'm not going to go into it. All right, cool. <laughs> it's just... As soon as you said politics, I kind of regretted yeah, asking. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> I always regret doing it, but it's not... You know, it's my... That's what I'm educated in. That's what I tend to stray back to when I want to feel smart. But it's not a good... Not a good thing to be doing. But yeah, that's all I've been watching, aside from potato porn, obviously. Nice. You, know, right, right. you got to watch the objectively superior porn. You didn't upgrade to dino porn like John did? No, nah, I don't consider that an upgrade. <laughs> that's a downgrade? No, I mean, not necessarily. It's just a competitor that I don't necessarily fuck with. It's a mediocre. <laughs> On a personal level, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I'm not going to say it's like... Obj- yeah, you know, it, it fucking sucks, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Johnny, it sucks. <laughs> I disagree. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna continue to dance around it. No, I hate dinosaur porn. <laughs> As you should. <laughs> you just gotta give it another chance. That's what they keep telling me, and I keep doing it. And every time I see that fucking lizard cock, I'm like, no, <laughs> no. Don't they have Chloe? No, I yeah, probably. I just wanted to say lizard cock to Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I appreciate. I don't it. think I, I. I did a little quick calculation, and I figured I'd never get to say it again. So that <laughs> big old lizard wang. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Wally told Wang. I've unfortunately seen a lot of Elder Scrolls porn, and then they do Argonians oh, with dicks. Here we go. Like, here that we is go. blasphemy. <laughs> yeah, I know. 
I said I saw it. I didn't say I looked for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had to look for something to see it somewhere. Yeah. And unfortu- <laughs> unfortunately, a lot of search terms overlap a lot of different things, especially when you're in such a niche thing like that. Potato porn. <laughs> yeah, potato porn's the same way. You go from like russet potatoes, like these fucking other ones, and then like the little purple shits. It's like, dude, it Shout looks- out to Sam. I don't know what you were doing when you found that shit I don't that know. you sent me. I don't know how you end up like the purple potatoes, dude. They just look like bruised chodes. Like, what oh are you? Oh my God. Yeah. So, John, what you been watching? Oh, oh my God, <laughs> me. You let me come here. We already hit up, John. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Everybody, Tyler. Yeah, Tyler. Where, uh, yeah, yeah, Tyler. Where you been? What do you watched? Ah. <sighs> Let me take a sip from the beer and then a, a sip from my Ricky glass real quick. <laughs> this glass imbued me with culture. I didn't know what it was like to be cultured until I saw this glass. Um, Trailer Park Boys. Uh-huh. White trash and in trouble. I've... What seems to be the officer problem? Fuck, wrong one. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've restarted Trailer Park Boys for the fifth time this month. This month? Wait, where's the comma in that? Where's the emphasis in that sentence? For the fifth time this month or for the first, for the fifth time this month? For the fifth time this month. I've rewatched for the fifth time comma this month? Five times this month, though, or is it this month the fifth time? Oh, yeah. No, oh, fuck. Oh, man. yeah, he's definitely watching more than five times. Oh, dude, I've watched Shadow Park Boys at least... I'm pushing probably 70 times what now. What the fuck? Dude, I can't get enough of it. What I just, I love hell? that. It feels so real. It, I, mean, I don't. I feel like I'm just hanging out with the boys, drinking, smoking, getting fucked up, and watching home videos and shit. I just can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't stuff. understand liking anything that much. What? How? Yeah. There's nothing in the world that I like that much. Then you are yeah. disappointing. <laughs> wow. I love you, dude. <laughs> No, uh, Trailer Park Boys. Um, I wonder if I'm even capable of that now. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder too. Wow. Um, I've been, I've started Cowboy Bebop again, hey, and nice. I'm enjoying it this time around. That's good. I think ever since I've watched Akira, and uh, shout out to Cinema Villains for putting out their Akira episode this week. That, yes, that episode ruled. Um, but ever since I watched Akira, I think my mind's been a little bit more open to anime now lately. And everyone's always been on my ass about watching Cowboy Bebop. Same. And um, I I restarted it. This is probably my fourth time I've given it a try. And I'm actually getting through it. And I actually kind of dig it and I like it. I'm going to restart it again because I've just been on Trailer Park Boys. But um, no, I'm going to restart it and actually pay attention. Because I mostly had it in the background because I've been playing Zelda Breath of the Wild. No, I'm not playing the new one, you fucking nerds. I don't have that much money to fucking fork over $70 for a goddamn video game. But um, when it gets cheap enough, I'll get it. But me and my friend are having a race to see who can beat Breath of the Wild right now. So that's going to be like a four-month race, I think. Hopefully oh. I win. But <laughs> 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 um, Fuck it, Scott. I'm going to talk about this, dude. And I've been watching this shit on YouTube. Uh, fucking Patty Mayo, this fucking bounty hunter. Pineapple here. juice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what's the pineapple juice My safe word is pineapple juice. Oh. Dude, he says a bunch of funny ass shit. He's Dude's like, a fucking. He's like, you fast, but you went faster. No. <laughs> he's this. Like, he started off as like this bounty hunter for Bond people, um, like Dog the Bounty Hunter kind of thing. Um, kind of. It's been a long time since. No, I've yeah. Dog. He goes around and like ta- legally he goes empowered and vigilantism. Yeah, exactly. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. He goes around so, and tases oh motherfuckers. <laughs> he is a but, bit of a prick. He, he, like he. Well, have, yeah. I figure you got to be a prick to want to do something like yeah, that. Yeah. Like he'll he'll have people detained already, and or they they'll be submissive. You know what I mean? And he'll just keep fucking tasing them, him and his fucking what the fuck? people and shit, dude. Like just this fucking dude's nuts. Dead. And like they, I seen them let this like meth head dude up. Like they let him stand up after he fucking got tased and shit, and was definitely down. They could have just tackled him, sat on top of him, handcuffed him, but they let him up and just fucking so kept they let tasing him. Back up him. For the TV. Like it was three people tasing him at once and fucking. God damn. And yeah, all they had to do was tackle him. It was Man. not a big guy. Say the the most memorable one I've watched this week was um, he was getting this girl that was out on bond. And she didn't pay for a bond, and her boyfriend answered the door. And he, he found his girlfriend, and he was trying to detain or arrest her outside. And this dude walks up and pulls off his leg. He's missing a leg, and he pulls off his metal leg and tries to beat the fuck out of Patty Mayo with it. But he just keeps pushing this dude down <laughs> like a poor Damn, teddy bear. I've never seen that one. i got to see that. Dude, it's ridiculous. But, I mean, 
they both look like they were smoking some hardcore meth because they were tweaking. Because even later on, she's like, oh, you want some, babe? She's, like, spreading her legs, trying to get him. He's like, what? no, I ain't interested in chicks like you. And shit like that. I'm like, dude, what the fuck am I watching? Until yeah, the cameras are off. <laughs> I think his girlfriend or his wife actually records the videos for him because he talks to the camera and says, babe, to the girl yeah. that's recording the videos. I don't know. I don't really know, but... I don't know. It's something I probably shouldn't be watching. I'm just ca- kind of fascinated <laughs> with it right now. It's yeah. kind of ridiculous. This dude's like a dickhead, but it's like he's a bound. Oh, well, he's a, like he's a sheriff now in Florida or some shit. But the videos I've been watching on Facebook, he is a bounty hunter. But the ones on YouTube, he's an actual sheriff or something or another. I like the bounty hunter one more than he's an actual sheriff. But um, sounds oh. like somebody who should be put against the wall, honestly. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> Fucking pigs. People um, like that do not belong around other people. I did uh, watch Ant-Man the Lost Quantumania also. Oh, yeah, same. That, that's a pretty good movie. I, I dug it. I know people are I give, still got to watch that. People are giving it a lot of shit, which I can see why, but I I just I had fun with it. It's definitely not better than Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, but it's just fun. It's a fun movie. It's a fr- ridiculous movie. I'll say that. Mm. Um, I feel like there's something else I watch, but it doesn't. Oh, actually, you know what, Mike, since you're here, what up? we talked about this at the show at the void like a month ago. Oh yeah. Yeah. I did finally Skin watch Skin of a Ring. Yep. Okay. And you are right. That is a piece of trash. I told you. God damn movie. I told you movie. all. I hey, watch this piece of shit movie. I, oh, I didn't know. I told him not to watch it. I no, couldn't I even didn't. focus on it. I was just playing fucking... My Nintendo Switch the yeah. whole time, just trying to watch this movie. There's nothing about the there movie that holds nothing. your attention. There's I don't even nothing. know what the fuck happened in the movie. It was like an hour and a half of fucking nothing. Yeah. So that's a shitty fucking movie. I'm going to tell you that right now. Yeah. Um, oh, and the last thing, because I'm going to give this a shout out also. I rewatched The Green Room because I was a guest on my friend's podcast, A Cut Above Horror, for their 100th episode. Hey. Which is out now. You can hear that episode. Um, that that was a great fucking time. That's the Escape from Nazis one, right? Yes. Oh, that was yep. Yeah, that was a good Dude. one. Dude, good movie. And yeah. um, Jacqueline, John, and Heidelberg, if you're listening, thank you so much for letting me be a part of that podcast and a part of your 100th episode at that. I am very grateful. I feel honored, and it's a great privilege to be a part of your show. And I did listen to your three-hour 100 retrospect episode. Jesus. That shit was awesome, and I highly recommend anyone that's listening, please listen to A Cut Above Horror. They are a great fucking podcast and great fucking people and smart fucking people, too. Um, But that's all I've pretty been watching this week. So should we get into this movie trailer? Oh, yeah. Get in this goddamn discussion? Yeah. All right, motherfuckers. Ready? Lights, uh, camera, action! Boku no nawa. Rider. Kamen Rider to namorase te morau. Kimi wa soshiki ga kaiyatsu shita. この中合戦型オーグメンテーションプロジェクトの最高傑作だ。これを被ると暴力の加減がまるでできなくなる。その辛さを見たが背負うことで誰かが幸せになってる。誰かを守ってたかうとはそういうことでしょう。今から政府公
But here in the state, we got a special preview on May thirty first. Was that May thirty first? Yeah. yeah, May thirty first this year. Um, I'm gonna let John take away this plot synopsis real quick. Before we do, here's a spoiler warning. Um, I don't know where you guys can see this movie. This was only limited in theaters for like this week until it comes on Blu-ray or something. But yep. So I'm sure we're not gonna Mephisto. Big boy. Thank you, Mike. But um, I just wanted to touch the cat. <laughs> <laughs> you can touch my cat. Ooh. Ben. Ooh, hey. Anyway, here's your spoiler warning. <laughs> uh oh, spoiler warning. Take it away, John. So this is the synopsis that I re- um that I wrote, and I got assistance with Mike to just proofread and edit a little bit. Thank you. Um, because there wasn't really a synopsis that was on IMDb other than the storyline itself. But here's our synopsis Fuck, on out of liquor. Shin Kamen Rider. Hongo Takashi is brought back to reality as Dr. Midi, um, Midori Kawa tasks him to protect his daughter Ryuko and to stop the evil organization Shocker from continuing their evil doing as the new hero, Kamen Rider. But as they know, there is more to Shocker than it seems. Okay, before we start... This was um, a show in the 1970s, right? Yes. So, originally, this film was released um, in honor of Kamen Rider's 50th anniversary, which was released in um, 1971. So, the series ran from 1971 to 1973. Damn, that shit's older than both of my parents. Yeah. And one of them's m- dead. <laughs> it's older than my dad and my mom. Or, not my mom, but my dad. Or, no, actually, no. My dad was born in the 70s, so never mind. My dad was only a year old when he when this came out but whatever um OB, no. <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah the series was running back then and then um Hideka um Ano wanted to uh do a film in the 50th anniversary but I think when he originally announced or was trying to get this project set up um it was during the time of covid so they couldn't do anything much until more recently, and um, I don't think I heard about the film project until 2022, and then when the movie released in 2023, then it was um, you know more publicly viewed by everyone in Japan, and then they brought it to the states, and it even got enough attention that now they're running it one more time, just one more time, and that will be June 5th, um, Monday at seven o'clock p.m. So they're doing what happened with Shin Godzilla. Yeah, um, Shingo was only like one week, but it got so popular it went like two or three more it, weeks. It, and it's, it, but it, it was only like every Friday though. Yep, yep, and that's um that's how that went. And then Shin Ultraman only ran I think one day. And this is the director for both of those, correct? Yes, that's what you told me when we left the theater. Yeah, yes, it is. Uh, Hideko Ano um, has done all the films. He's done all three Legacy Shin films. He's done Shin Godzilla, Shin Ultraman, and now Shin Kamen Rider. So he's done all those films for um, the Shin Legacy, which is what people are are dubbing it as, or just Makes my sense. my case because it really is that because it's um it's a new viewing of of all those franchises, Godzilla, Ultraman, and Sh- and Kamen Rider. Well, that's what Shin kind of means. Yes, in a way, it's like new, improved, and godlike. Yes, if yes, I'm correct. Yes, exactly. So, um, yeah, I, 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 for one, I'm just trying to like get the process of like what I need to say for. Well, my other question is, um, not not really a question, but statement is that, um. Y- I, I thought that you have actually watched the show, but when we left the theater, you said you've actually never no, seen no, the show. No, no, um, no. The only exposure that I had to Common Rider was the American version, which was the Mask Rider. There was an the, American version? There was an American version, which was... I did no research on I'm sorry, which, I didn't do anything. Yeah, no, it's all good. No, it was dubbed as Mask Rider because that's what common... The word common in Japanese is mask. Which, I've got something to say about that. Oh, but. God. So, <laughs> but... There is the American dubbed Mask Rider, and the only exposure that I really had was when Masked Rider teamed up with um, Power Rangers um, Lost in Space. <laughs> and, Fuck. And 
that was the only exposure that I had of Mask Rider, a uh, common Rider. Say, I'm not gonna lie. When you drug me to this theater, I thought I was gonna be pissed. <laughs> I thought I was gonna have to sit through a fucking Power Rangers esque kind of fucking movie. So but... I, I did not like Power Rangers growing up. Yeah, you, I thought you that didn't that like shit it. was fucking lame. But I will say I did enjoy this movie, and it's not what I thought it was going to be at all. Uh, and I didn't. I've never. Me. I've never watched this show. I've only heard about it from going to G Fest with you. Yep. And all of our. Godzilla nerd friends um, buying the figures and the yep. DVDs and stuff. That's the only way I've ever even known. Uh, other, if if I never went to G Fest, I would not even have a clue what the fuck Common Writer is. Which okay, if you're gonna call it Common Writer. You're gonna do the common in Japanese and just do the rest in English. Just call it the Mask Fucking Writer. All right, just fucking do it like that. But I mean, that's. But uh, either way, then do it all in Japanese. It, it, it's still. All right? Yeah, I mean, it's. Still... I. <laughs> it's still it's, it's a stylistic choice it's yeah sure. it's still common rider like you know because that's how you know it's pronounced as, uh in japanese common rider i'm just being a dick but uh, i no. get it but no i get you still it should be the mask rider oh, the mask rider <laughs> oh my god the mask rider <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> um i know i know during the film there is a lot of stuff that I was taking in, and I know you guys were just kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know I was taking a lot in from that movie because it was like my second exposure to Common Rider. Well, then what was your first? Like I said, Lost in Space. Power oh yeah, 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 yeah. My. And I'm sitting here like watching everything, and that first fucking scene where they're getting chased by spider og ridiculous was crazy as hell <laughs> ridiculous and i was kind of shocked about it because i was like oh shit i was like they're going right into this movie and with the fight scene with um the spider og with n- not just spider og but um when he gets introduced to Ryuko because um he doesn't know who this chick is and he's like what am i doing why am i killing people like why is there blood everywhere why is there blood on me i'm like wait a minute you don't know who the hell you are see you're already bringing up two things i really want to talk about oh go ahead the first part is when they are in the car chase scene that's how the movie opens yes which is pretty interesting that it just starts off just Fast fucking eleven. Style. Exactly. I was but. like, "This is called inmadius rest beginning, <laughs> beginning in the middle of the thing." This is a literary term. Um, thank you. I failed English, so I don't know that. But <laughs> um, the one thing I found ridiculous in that beginning spot is they show the car chase and they zoom out far as hell, like over a mountain, and you see a barricade of semi trucks. Yeah, what the hell was that all about? And they just pile right through them and, and it's you, not the only one in the movie and i don't know why no it's not it will get to that there shouldn't have even been one why but were there more <laughs> this is the opening scene and they just pile right through these trucks and i was watching this movie I was like dude they're about to crash what the fuck are they doing i thought it was gonna like someone's gonna die <laughs> no they just go right through the and they just pile through movie. like fucking fast 11 style i was like what in the fuck is this shit and then fucking they get caught up and the common rider comes out and starts beating the living fuck out of people and there's a fuck ton of good blood action which that's what got me interested was all because i'm a torture porn guy i like my blood i like my gore i like all that shit and then they just had the blood spurting out everywhere like dude like there's one scene where he just punch a dude in the face and the blood just goes all over these trees and all over the grass i was like that is fucking sweet i fucking the, um, love that shit i believe uh, so i recall that when they're talking with the director, they told him you can put as much blood as you want. They did not care how how blood gore they did in this movie because they could have put more. I think it is worth mentioning though that while the movie is really bloody, it is not gory almost at all. You yes. almost never you watch a guy get kicked in the back so hard that Common Rider has to pull his foot out of him, and you don't see any bone shards, no organs. There's blood, but it, it's a PG twelve rated movie. Yes, that part did bother me. I, I do remember that because um, I it is like, PG twelve, not PG thirteen for the pedants at home who are going to correct yeah. me. <laughs> On screen, it is shown PG twelve, and I believe that's part of their rating system for the region too. But um, 
I do remember that, and I was like, oh, shit, like, there's a lot of blood, and then I even point out, I pointed that out, I was like, you should have rated this a little higher, but you said no, because for one, typically that would involve, like, more gore, body gore, that would... Yeah, it's violent, but it's not, I don't want to use the word disturbing, because... It's not disturbing. No, it's, it isn't, dis- it's a really, it's actually kind of a weirdly cold violence in it's this like movie. It's like more fun gore. The gore itself kind of like, is what I picture I, in my head is like underworld in a way, or the, not even underworld. Um, it's ex- I don't I wouldn't say fun, but the gore itself is exciting. The blood is exciting, not the gore. There is no gore. Yes. The blood itself is exciting, but the violence is kind of weirdly cold to me. It doesn't feel, except for when we get to uh, the mantis chameleon guy in the end, it doesn't really feel like any of the violence has much behind it. Everybody seems kind of. Like, they're just resigned to fight, and they're fighting because they have to, but there really isn't a whole lot of animosity except for yeah. Waspog and the chameleon guy. At the well, end. It, it felt strange to me is what I guess I, guess I want to say. Doesn't that have to do with uh, the main scientist guy that died early in the movie? Oh, in, the, um, in the Evil Dead cabin, that I why? like to call it. Why does it have to do with him? Well, because didn't he create all of them? Uh, so yes, the, he did. I, think we're, talk- I yes. think we're talking about something. I think we're talking about two different things. I'm just, I'm just talking about a stylistic thing in the movie. Not necessarily a plot oh, related. Oh, my bad. I feel like the whole the whole of the vi- the entirety of the violence in the movie felt weird to me. Was what I was saying. Not oh. that not that it was any particular thing going on in the story. Okay, my bad. I misunderstood that. I wasn't clear about it either. I just kind of went into the point. My bad. But yeah, no, I remember seeing it, and when I saw that rating, I was just like, oh damn. But like you know, explaining it, they didn't do much that would, you know, uh, what is. Uh, the term that I'm looking for that would you know disturb the yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, and I think overall the movie has a message that I think is going to be received positively by the people who are going to be watching it because it's just honestly it's a pretty milk toast movie in terms of the points that it tries to make. It's like it's like really soft copaganda in that it like the whole thing is the guy the main character coming to grips with his police officer dad being willing to sacrifice himself to save other people, and that's a huge uh, point of personal development for. Takeshi so yep there's that and that's always a point against a piece of media for me but um that is generally going to be received positively so I think that might also be taken into into account in the rating is the intent behind it in that like this is meant to be a positive movie mm-hmm. and it's probably going to be received as a positive movie I mm-hmm. can see that because as you're even saying that I was thinking in my brain like well for the states usually if anything's like r-rated it has to do with language yep. sex gore and nudity sex and female nudity nudity. Yep. nudity female nudity yes and a dick gets you an x rating there there was does it really i thought it used to i don't think it does anymore no. but it used to i've seen a lot of horror movies with a lot of fucking dongs yeah. in there yeah i don't think it is anymore <laughs> it's pride month too so i mean that's no that's dip okay. don't no don't start conflating that that's a whole other <laughs> issue. no those are not the same there's a debate about that to my fellow bisexuals what a fucking let's go pride month anyway um no yeah that made sense why it's like a pg-12 movie then because there's not a lot of there's not any heavy language in the movie at all. No. As far as we are translated through the the subtitles, That's true. at least. I think, yeah. <laughs> and there's a couple other points where I think the translation probably has a lot to do with some issues that Tyler oh, and I had. Oh, buddy, we're going to get there. <laughs> oh, my God. Because the, d- the, the choice of words for the translation, because that's all we have access to. We don't, you know, Tyler and I don't know what they're actually saying, I assume. No. So... But like but whoever also, subtitled there's this. like there's no sex at all, nope. which I'm actually glad they didn't push the love story on yeah. the two main characters. Yeah, in the with movie. Uh, with um, uh, Rudy, Rico and uh, and Hongo. Yeah, the common uh, the mask rider. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. The mask rider. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad they didn't do that. Like it felt like they were trying to push it there a little bit, in like the middle. Until she got fucking slaughtered by the chameleon. Oh, man. And it was like, uh, well. That was pretty rough. Well, I think even, like, her brother, which is, like, the butterfly, which is, like, the main argument. Oh, butterfly mm-hmm. og, yep. Yeah. He was like, did you fuck my sister? He's like, no. He's like, oh, I don't give a fuck about you. Yeah. Like, there was a, yeah, there was a point of honor there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which he even said it's more of, like, a friendship style than a relationship style. But I felt like he secretly was kind of gaining a... Uh, a secret love relationship with her, but they didn't admit it. Yep, no. I don't know how the culture goes over there no, with that kind all, of thing. But. And also, Hongo 
you I mean the way he take you see he takes the role of the common rider very seriously. He's trying to be about what he needs to do to the mm-hmm. point where he does sacrifice himself and his soul gets put into his helmet yep. and then goes and tries to help his replacement all that kind of stuff but And I know at first he was very skittish about it because he was like I don't want to kill people but then yeah. he took it yeah he took it to that serious point halfway through the film when he knew he had to actually step up as the common rider. Yeah. So you know, there's that that was implemented onto his character, which gave that. Where was I going with that? Better construction of Hongo as the common writer. I can't remember what I was responding to. You shouldn't have done that thirty dab off of Bernard. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> <laughs> you lift your torch here, you fuck. <laughs> I had to move it. I but mean, the fourth or fifth can I blew up with the blowtorch. Right? <laughs> yeah, but thirty dabs should not be a flex. <laughs> so. How did you guys feel about the um, augmented uh, cy- cyborgs, half human that were going on through the movies, like Spider Og, Wasp Og? Whoa, whoa, hold, oh, hold up! Can I go back? Yes. Can we go back to um? Yes. I, w- I remembered why I was saying. Oh, go ahead, please. The, uh, I, I think they wouldn't have pushed the love story because I think by the time you get to the point where they even start really put like making it known that that mm-hmm. might be a possibility, ser- a serious possibility. Hongo has already put himself into the mindset of, I am the common Rider, I have to do this thing. So he wouldn't have pursued it, even if the course of the... M- I don't think the character would have pursued it, even if the other characters around him mm-hmm. had been made to. I think they just wrote him that way. Okay. I don't think it was ever a real option if they wanted to keep that serious dutiful angle to hongo okay i can see that yeah. and i appreciate that they did that that is a point up for me i do too yes me too because even if they did the movie would have been an extra hour long probably. yeah it did really feel like that was another one of those movies where by the end of it or by by close to the end of it i was finding myself sitting there like i'm still watching common Rider. <laughs> oh <my laughs> you God. and me both i'm still it's like here. they get to the end i'm like all right it's about the end it's like i look at my phone i'm like there's still another 30 fucking yeah. minutes of that goddamn movie it was it was too long <laughs> It was, uh, it was too long, and I think that it's weird the way they padded the runtime because there were some there were some scenes that could have been longer. There were some characters that could have gotten a lot more screen time. Oh yeah, and I oh, think would have improved yeah. the film if they had. So I think the way they chose to pad the runtime was strange, at least in my opinion. Oh yeah, no, there was definitely some characters that I wish would have been Scorpion. Oh my god, dude! Scorpion yeah. Og Scorpion. was definitely one of them. Before we get back to that, what you said. Um, How did you guys feel about all the augmented half human, half cyborg? They're not half cyborg. cyborg though. No, really, they're not cyborgs. No, it was all bio cyborg, augmentation. Yeah. Oh, bio. What well, my uh, my understanding of it was that it was all bio augmentation, and then they had high tech equipment. Yes, that's what I got too. The 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 equipment was really integrated and built for their physiologies, but the whole the personal change was. Bio. Uh, well, yeah, it was a bio. It was a biological change. They because, also had like a high tech wing of it, though. Because every all right, let's go through all the augments real quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So obviously, first we have Common Rider, which is he's the Grasshopper Og. Grasshopper, grasshopper Og. Og, and then we oh. have. Go ahead. Keep going. I just I remembered the ones we were missing before. The Og we were missing. We were missing one. All right, cool. Then you're gonna back me up on this. I'm gonna go in order. Yeah, yeah. Go. As as so then we have the Bat augmentation guy, which mm-hmm. was yep. like a scientist. Yep. Spider Og. He was trying to develop a. Oh virus shit! I already forgot about the Spider everybody. augmented guy. Spider Og. Which of course I forget because I have arachnophobia <laughs> and I don't want to think about that fucking part. And I did jump and scream when there was that fake fucking spider in my fucking face in that fucking movie. God damn it. So, all right, so we have the grasshopper hog. 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 <laughs> Grasspo- grasshopper, grasshopper og. og. Spider uh, og. Yeah, all of them og. are referred to yeah. as og as a title in the movie. Which actually took me a long time to realize. Irritating I was, in the theater, I was like, what the fuck are they talking <laughs> about? And then they said augmentation. I'm like, okay, now I get it. It's like if, I just feel like if you're talking to somebody to their face, calling them grasshopper og seems really fucking stupid. Probably pretty racist, too, huh? Nah, I mean, I'm it's literally. It around. <laughs> nah, that's a weird concept of. I mean, race is a weird concept, but that's a weird concept of race. It's bio racist. No. It is. I mean, it would. No, you're right. You would. You would be taking a bi, You would t- be taking a biological race realist perspective there. You would. <laughs> which I don't fuck with. So all right, we had the bat og, and then we had the scorpion og, yes. which. Who did not get enough screen time. No, yes. and that pissed me off, and I got really confused, She like honestly. She stabbed like 17 guys, got shot a bunch of times, came, and then died. 
And the last... That's what she said! And the last two of those items happened off screen. So she it was very underwhelming. Her, her contribution to the movie was underwhelming. She does come back as a feature later in another AUG Tyler will mention in a second. But, dude... Okay. It's more scorpion so then it was the scorpion og and then the wasp augmentation right yes. and get it yeah and then i feel like <laughs> that's the one i'm missing is the one okay so the one we were missing was actually a third iteration of the grasshopper og because this, the, a second one is the uh, there's a later common the second common right there's a yep. second common rider who is an upgraded grasshopper og yep. from common uh, rider from hongo two. yeah yep. common rider two he's referred to later there was a third iteration, if you remember, in that tunnel scene that I was complaining about before. That's right. Where was the they, whole gang? Th- the whole yes. gang was locust augs, and locusts are grasshoppers that have become a plague because they're like searching for food and eating fucking everything in sight. It's an actual biological change that happens in the grasshoppers to make them that way. Well, I got that. And I, did, I feel like there was still one more. That was the, that. That satisfies the feeling that I was forgetting something. Oh, we see, were forgetting because I would consider those a separate og. I, yes, I suppose. I. I I still feel like there was one more I'm still missing, but I didn't. I don't know if I really. I mean, the last one was Butterfly Og. Then uh, that was it. We had Butterfly and Chameleon. Og. Um, Chameleon. KK, Mantis. They called him KK Og because it was so Chameleon. I missed. Yeah. What was? I, Wasn't what he was, mixed with like three different? He said things? he was the first tri hybrid. Yeah. yeah. And I only remember two. So if I look Ogs, up, I only remember him being Chameleon Og and Mantis Og. His I, face I is split even, down the middle. I didn't catch the Mantis. I thought it was split because like Chameleons can look in different yeah. directions. Yeah. No, it looked like that, and the Mantis has kind of a pointy eye too. But oh. it, it it is split down the middle. Yeah, his at least his mask. I don't I don't remember exactly how they split his face, but at least his mask was fifty fifty. No, yes. you know, I'm talking about the mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. The mask was no. Split that 50/50. makes okay. All of the Ogs have these different masks that uh, are pretty cool. Very angular, high tech. They have a drop down mouth part to protect yes. the face in full, and they're all based on the appearance of the animal that the they're augmented after. Yes. They're not all bugs, as we mentioned. There's chameleon, and there was um. The bat, the bat og also. Bat og, yep. The bat og, I think, was the only one that didn't have a mask. He was just real fucking ugly. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. The practical effects there were His pretty cool. His fucking CGI wings it was were C- bad. Okay, but... they looked bad, but I'm, I'm, I'll make the point again. You said this after the wings that. looked bad. They, they looked shitty, but the motion of the wings after he gets shot in one wing with a shotgun, the motion of his wings looked really fucking good for a bat trying to stay aloft with a wing with a huge hole in it. Mm-hmm. That looked really cool because you could see one wing is working way harder than the other one, and the other wing is flapping at weird angles to compensate for the lack of lift in the other one. So they they did that. The animation was good, but the look of it looked like shit. And he was making like a, a bat virus. Yeah, right? a mind control virus. I remember yeah. I shouted out coronavirus in the theater. <laughs> So I'm a dick, I Bat know. Og's whole deal was he was going to make a virus that once you were infected with it, you were basically just completely enslaved to a his mind will. slave, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah yep. a mind slave kind it was of mind thing. Slave. Yeah, but just, just stop. <laughs> okay, so Why? back to the second common writer and the locust thing. Yep, didn't dude say the the father of R- Ryoko, right? Ryoko. 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 Yep. I don't. I'm not Japanese. I don't know. But um, didn't he say that? The common rider, our common rider, our mask rider, mm-hmm. mask rider. Um, he only did that on him. I thought he said he, right. No, she said that he was the last, um, the last person that her father, the doctor, the scientist, made. Um, so, common rider has. Okay, I'm gonna complain about the whole prana system here. Yeah, all oh, of the, so, so I we do, yep. we have to talk about the magic system. That this is a magic system. We have to talk about the magic system that this whole augmentation process is based on. They talk about a universal life energy that is exhaled the by prana. the prana by all the living force. organisms. Pretty much the fucking I, force. Well, what it is, it's they took this, they ripped this straight out of a lot of Indian religions, Indian cosmology and metaphysics, where they think that there is this energy carried by the breath that is present in air that's utilized in the body. It's called prana. This is like when you hear people ba- talking about balancing like some of their energies, oh, their so breath this energy. this is a real thing. This is, this is a twisting of a real thing to make it make sense for the story they wanted to tell. This is not how the actual system of thought works. but that, like the force. It's an inspiration, yeah. But so... Metachlorians. Um, Midichlorians were cooler. <laughs> Midichlor- no, they were not. Midichlorians were way cooler. No, they were not. I fuck with midichlorians. Midichlorians suck I and ass. Team but uh, back to back to the thing. So, common rider and also the second common rider have a 
belt yes. that is used to... Well, they all do, don't they? They don't no, all no, have no, belts. No. They all have different ways of taking in prana. Yes. But the common Rider specifically, and this synchronizes with their use of a motorcycle as both transport and weapon, um, they have a belt that it looks like a jet turbine from an airplane, and this is spun by wind going past them and eventually tries to collect enough prana for them to be able to access their powers and stuff, which they can't do if they don't have enough of it. Yep. And don't they have to take it from all other life beings? No, they don't. Well, it's... Ex- so they were actually it's kind like of... It's like the cool. Force. They, they were, take they, it from all living beings or some they shit. They can't do it directly. So you saw with Waspog, she... So she also does the whole mind slave thing, but not uh, in a different way. Uh, it was implied that it was pheromones because she's based on, you know, a queen wasp mm-hmm. yeah. who controls her colony that way. So she did it physically. She had a bunch of people who were subjugated to her will, but still conscious and made to think that they wanted to be doing this. So they would willingly sacrifice their own prana, which she took by touch through her hands. Yep. Not through any other equipment. That was something she could do on her own, and also Butterfly Og. I was about to say, was able to it do seems it, but he like they throne. can all do that, though, in a way, then. It's, I don't no, think it didn't. No. Did, did the common Riders ever do that? The common Riders? No, they I did only not. ever saw them take in Prana through their belts. That's the only way that the common Riders have ever taken in Prana. But, but the second common Rider does not need the wind to use the mm-hmm. belt. The second common Rider's belt is self powered. He did say that. He said you didn't. Oh yeah, yeah, right. yeah. The first yep. um, Hongo was actually really confused by that in the because f- they they meet by fighting because all of these Ogs have been taken. So we talked about Shocker, the secret organization. Yep, we- <laughs> doing the pink one in the stink. Yeah, we talked we talked about Shocker and how they're doing them in the stink with this whole augmentation <laughs> thing because they do it non consensually. They didn't sign up for this, so I mean it is it, they are they are getting fucked by this. But um, doing the pink one in the stink. <laughs> where was I even going? Fuck. I'm no, sorry. <laughs> so no, we're talking about um how different ways of them taking in prana. But, right, right. But the thing is that the other augmentations. Oh yeah, yeah. They were all being controlled by Shocker. Yes. And so um they do kind of a at least in at least with respect to Common Rider two they pull kind of a JoJo deal where they fight real hard you know and then they have this grudging respect it's like all right I'll join your team. Who? What? Oh JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Like the, in in the early seasons of JoJo, basically every villain becomes part of the gang if they don't get murked. So what is it, that? What do you mean? The show? The show? Oh, the, the show? The incredibly popular show and manga, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Oh, so it's an anime, huh? Yes. Yes. No wonder why I don't. Yeah, know. it's one of the very few I actually like. Yeah, this this movie also falls under the same umbrella of a lot of the reasons I don't like anime. Yeah. All right, what were you going to say, John? No, so I was going to say the different Ogs ways controlled that... controlled by Shocker. Yeah, but yeah. the different ways that um, I, they... I know with, like, the Spider Og, Bat Og, um, all the other Ogs, they didn't take in Prana the same way that the Common Riders right. did. And as you said, um, Wasp Og took it by touch. Um, Butterfly Og took it by literally, like, consuming it from his throne. Yeah. And um, the throne took it from the environment. It concentrated yes, it from the environment. From the environment. Because I was going to say this before when you were talking about the midichlorians, and then I got I, I got <laughs> furiously patriotic over the midichlorians. <laughs> Some chest beating was involved. So um, the whole prana deal is that it's exhaled by all living things, which means that it is literally contained in the gases that come out of your lungs and shit. But I was thinking... Even like a fart. Exhaled. It's not the same thing. Isn't it, well, it's not exhalation. Well, no. You, it's, it's an no, it's, it's not. No, it's not. Come on, guy. Exhalation l- explicitly means from the lungs. Come Breathing. On, guy. No. Come on. Hey, relax, guy. Relax, guy. I never relax over definitions. <laughs> definitions are important, otherwise we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. As Scott would say, as you shouldn't. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah, Shit. no. No, I was th- um, thinking about how, mm-hmm. like, the way you can just condense it from the environment because our entire atmosphere is just shit that living things have exhaled at some point. All of the gases you in the just atmosphere. Said shit. All of the ga- what? Sh- fuck you. <laughs> All of the gases in the atmosphere, including gases. The- I'm gonna fucking <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, dude. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just hearing words and they're clicking in my. So the oxygen came out of plants. All of the other shit came out of other living beings. If you point at me one more time because I say the word shit, I'm gonna shit in you. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) Yes, photosynthesis. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, prana in this in this conception of prana, it can be drawn from anywhere that there's air because all of the air has come from living things at some point. Metachlorians, yes. 
Well, the midi chlorine. No, we're not arguing about Star Wars. <laughs> I'm not going to argue about the function of midi chlorines with somebody who doesn't even like them. The whole time I watched the movie, it's a wasted the pra- discussion. Prana to me just seemed like meta fucking chlorines the whole time I was kind watching the fucking movie. Because I mean, prana is external in this context, and midi chlorines are always internal. Midi chlorines only exist inside of living beings, and they well, cannot the, exist outside. Well, the way of them. they get the force is from getting it from inside becoming external in the way they get it from all life species. Well, which but, is how I feel. It's all the prana. The midi chlorines are an inter intermediary they're not it doesn't the force does not originate from them but we couldn't access it without them they're a necessary intermediary whereas the prana is free-flowing there is no nest there is no intermediary there All except right, now we, I'm fucked. unless we're talking about the the technology that the common writers use to take it in which you could kind of view as an intermediary or as a tool i prefer to think of that differently Wait, can you repeat that one more Which time? part? The, Just the very last part. Like the tool versus intermediary yes. thing? So I'm thinking of the midichlorians as agents. They're, thing, they're, they're like beings doing something as opposed to the common rider's belt, which is a tool that they're wearing. I, I, I would I would distinguish those. Well, isn't the prana beings doing things too? Because isn't it part of the there human no, there, soul? There there are no prana beings. Well, isn't well, it part the, of the soul though? Right. Oh, hold on. Let me let me. There are no prana beings in the sense that there are midichlorians as intermediaries because all beings are basically powered by prana. Just like midichlorians, right? Not like midi. They're not the same. I don't, dude. I, I, if you don't get the distinction, I don't know how to make it clearer than I that. I guess I, I'm trying. I'm it. really trying to understand, but just in my brain, I'm so ignorant. I just see it as midichlorians. No, it's it's not the same. It's not the same. It's like fuck, fuck. John, what do you got to say? Well, all I got to say is that, um, like with spider og, bat og, they don't they don't consume. Like from what I saw, they weren't consuming like piranha from. Um, any of the victims, especially like, we never saw them do it, but they would yep. still need it for their powers. Yeah, that's what I was. But like thinking. Tyler was saying, they're always using it because no, it is part of the the soul is composed of prana in this context. Mm-hmm. It's not that it's like part of it. Like you are that, and they talk about your prana pattern, which is you can put an equal sign between that and soul. It that's all that means is like they're taking the sci-fi angle where it's like you can map somebody's brain, and if you could pause it at one moment and then restart it, that's them. That would really, really be them. Well, when they take the prana, don't they say that the soul goes to like this matrix kind of esque universe was, or that, some shit? That was an artificial thing that yep. um the scientist guy, the dad, the father right, and yeah. the daughter. The father and the daughter made it, and then the uh, the butterfly og. So we're talking about uh, Doctor Midorikawa was yes, his name, yep. Midorikawa. God and damn. Then, um, How do you remember? that i don't know <laughs> i try to remember names <laughs> so we had dr midorikawa doing that and he was working with roriko to make the what did the, what the hell did it they was call like it? uh like, um, it, it was basic so there would the plan was to upload every single so okay we got to go back to shocker we yes. have to go back to the reason that shocker exists <laughs> and i'm sure tyler's gonna love this the reason that shocker exists is to make us happy <laughs> Over and above all, that's what it is. That's we're, what she said. We are looking at. I groan. I, I'm sure you guys heard me groan when we saw when they explained this whole deal. Yep. It was so. Have you? I mentioned the Remembrance of Earth's Past series on this show before. So if anybody has uh, not read that, they need to go read the Remembrance of Earth's Past series by Qixin Liu. I don't read books. It's really fucking good. You'll love it. I have the last one. The second one's on YouTube. The first one you've got to scam Audible out of a free month membership to to listen to. But you can do that. Fake email address is protonmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Do that. Use that. But don't tell anybody that I told you to do it because I didn't. Um, but, um, you know, this is recorded right now. Yeah. I know, right? I know. Yeah. I know. So fucking. I'm just yeah. talking. I'm no, just of talking. Course. I'm just no, talking. Of no, of course. So. so what were we? Oh, the Remembrance of Earth's Past series. Yep. Metachlorians. Shut the fuck up, Tyler. <laughs> Go ahead, dude. So. Sorry. I'm, Fuck me. I've been drinking. Um, I've got old style right here. No. So, the central yeah. conflict of the Remembrance of Earth's Past trilogy is that humanity comes into contact with, like, legit aliens from four light years away. So. Only four? Only four. Four light years. I mean, that's still a lot. It's a, that's not and like that's the a point. lot, a lot. Yeah, but so the, the this other civilization has spaceships capable of traveling at one percent the speed of light so four light years equals 400 years of travel and they're going to travel because they're they're taking seriously this idea of dark forest cosmology which is the idea that any uh, i'll use uh isaac arthur's phrase here any being that's capable of clawing its way up the four billion year deep corpse pile that is evolution on this planet and on any planet 
that is going to harbor life like us is going to be a predator. You're going to have to be the apex predator on your planet to develop the capability to leave it. Kinda so that's like, the idea. But that the the fact that any spacefaring civilization, or at least the vast majority that you're going to run into, are going to be hostile. They're going to kill you for self-preservation in or my, enslave you. In my brain, what you're saying, I'm picturing like um, the Predator movies. Kind of, but way. not for sport. Okay. For s- purely out of it's me or you. And so they're operating from this model and humanity. This is where the, this is where this series merges with this movie. Is in the uh, is in what they call the wall face the wall facer project, which is t- a title taken from like old meditation practices of facing walls until you, excuse me, attain enlightenment. Or like when you're possessed and you stand and face the wall for like four hours. Well, that that sleep kind of, but that specifically is what they took the title from because okay. it was a UN initiative. This takes place in our world in a hypothetical future. So there's a UN initiative once they realize that oh shit aliens are coming and they're not coming to say hello. Um, they designate people from around the world to each come up with their own unique plan for how to defeat these aliens or to save humanity either one whichever how they don't give a fuck how it gets done you've got the entire world's finances to stop the apocalypse and they choose like four people to do it and so like the fourth horseman no i I don't Mm. know if it's i don't know if it's exactly four. that was just that was don't don't read into that all right my bad but this is kind of what um it's kind of fusing another concept that's in, in Common Rider, it's kind of fused with another concept of that's popular in sci-fi of like the, the optimized paperclip maker, where w- if you try to set anything, an AI to attack, because this is all run by an AI. Uh, if you set it, the idea is that you if, if you set an AI the task of optimizing or maximizing anything, regardless of what it is, it will eventually consume the entire world blindly in the pursuit of that thing, no matter what the costs. And so... You get situations like Grey Goo, another another sci-fi thing, where you get Grey Goo, which is like nanobots that swarm over everything, consuming okay, reality, well, nanobots, uh. like consuming everything. the The popular example is to make paper clips. Like, if you program an AI to say, just make the most amount of paper clips, just do that, and that's its only directive. It will consume the entire universe to make paper clips eventually. And so they're applying this idea of the paperclip maximizer to happiness in this movie the ai's task and so we get the the unit k which is the ai's the stationary ai uh interfaces with the world through an android named k not mm-hmm. not not an android it's a cyborg oh yeah oh yeah i completely forgot so, about yeah, that whole fucking storyline yeah it's a it's an it's a it's a cyborg cyb- no, okay i don't, don't want to say no it's not a cyborg he's because an it, he's, not, he's, he's an ai he's in, an in AI. a robotic shell he's yes. not a cyborg because there's no well organic he starts component. off as an ai and they just call him i right and they upgrade him to j I, no i is the original stationary ai yep. and then j gets made that's the automaton automaton is a much better and word. then they call it uh they upgrade the k. j to k yeah k, yep. j and okay, k are I the same i completely forgot about that whole fucking yeah. thing. Yeah. So K serves as kind of an observer throughout the whole thing. Yep. Uh, why did we start talking about K? Because oh, the AI. The AI. Yep. Yeah. So the the AI's task is to maximize human happiness, and that's its only directive, and that's where they fuck up, because they don't set any parameters for how it's supposed to do it or any limits on its behavior in pursuit of that goal. It's allowed to do whatever the fuck, and then all of the other augs, some of the other augs, not all of them, because the uh, spider og, no spider og was pursuing. His, he, he liked to talk about his own happiness when he was talking mm-hmm. about murdering people. Well, so. Wasn't he also talking about trying to take the prana? He was going to get cl- everyone to the he new was gonna, world yeah, or he some was gonna, bullshit. That was, that was butterfly og. Well, was butterfly. no, the spider did it too. Because spider he was og, working under a butterfly. That's true. He was, yeah, he was facilitating it. But um, spider og took kind of a perverted magneto approach. In his own mind, he was taking a perversion of Magneto's approach, where because Magneto, make no fucking mistake, Magneto is portrayed as a villain, but Magneto is like a freedom fighter. He's, based, oh yes, I mean Magneto is like he's trying to start a separatist movement for the for, mutants, for mutants, yes, for their own safety and well-being. He's all by all means a revolutionary hero for the mutants. Don't get me wrong about that. What they're doing here is a perversion of that ideal, where Spider Og wants to eliminate all non-augmented humans. Dude, and I try to make a world for Augs. <laughs> no, he's trying. <laughs> now I'm getting fucked no, up. No, <laughs> he wants to eliminate all non-Augs, and he wants to try to like 
you know, start a new species of Augs and say yep. fuck humans because humans treated us like shit. Because all of these people, I was, I was, uh, that goes back to what I was telling you before, Tyler. That With all the of these, no, no, that all of these Augs are like deeply psychologically flawed in a certain way, mm-hmm. and they all represent different ways that you have to. Because I think I, I view this entire story as Hongo's defeating of his own demons. I guess kind of in like a Scott Pilgrim sort of way. You did say that where in he the gets theater, yeah, actually. where he eventually gets to oh. the realization that like his father's sacrifice for another person, it, can, it that under some circumstances it can be good to sacrifice for others. That's how I view this whole movie: is his arc to overcome that mental block about his dad, and all of the different augs symbolize different things in his own psychology that he's overcoming to reach that conclusion. All right, I didn't even think about that. All right, I. I or it might just be a fun beat 'em up movie, and I'm overthinking. <laughs> no, actually, I think you might be right. I actually, I like that. I didn't even, I didn't even see or notice or catch that at all. I was just kind of stuck because I've never seen any of this shit. No, so just, I was just like, yeah. I'm gonna just watch this movie. Yeah. But that's, see, and what you say? You've taken like a movie class before or some <laughs> shit. Don't ever, so you, you can't you enjoy take, movies. You take the way one you philosophy do. of film class and you're fucked forever. <laughs> yeah. John, what do you guys say? I know you've been a little yeah, bit. No, I've been talking I, way no, too much. I mean, this is, this is literally the conversations that Mike can have on a daily basis, like when it's stuff like this or even philosophy in general. Because we, it hurts. We've gotten into like hours of just conversation of stuff like this. Yeah, I would say I recently. could probably literally listen to talk about hours with that. I was pretty in, pretty enthralled by that shit. But it's just um the thing was that I enthralled that troll, goddamn it. No, oh, troll, troll. <laughs> um, it's just like from observing the film, I'm still like because I'm still trying to remember, you know, because I know how the way that he put it. Yeah, you know, uh. Uh, Hongo was definitely trying to break through that barrier. That I did see because I did... And successfully does by the end of yes, the movie. Yes, he does because, you know, he's able to make that sacrifice for himself. No, well, no, not, 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 not for not, himself. No, not even for himself. The point is that it's not for himself. It is it's for his for, enemy. It's for his enemy, yep. It is for his enemy. The Butterfly Og says that, that great line, you would give your life for the soul of a stranger, and he just nods. Yeah, he gives him sympathy, which I didn't like, honestly. Uh, I think we have very different opinions of Butterfly Og. Well, I think we. I have a very do. positive view of Butterfly Og. I don't. <laughs> it's he's a lame bad guy. Oh no, his idea was cool. I, I like his idea. I don't give a fuck about Butterfly Og as a person. I like the idea. We we have to go back to the whole of um. Um, blah, 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 the project of maximizing human happiness to talk about butterfly og mm-hmm. so johnny whatever continue with that sorry no, we, we got to do a huge backslide to talk properly about no, butterfly of, og. of course um it's just with the entire oh something something that i did see about ryuko because ryuko ryuko yeah she's not um a human like how uh no, no, yeah, she was like she Hongo was lab was. grown. She was lab grown. She and Butterfly Og were Whoa, lab what grown. The fuck? No, 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 no. Butterfly Og was not. Butterfly Og was human oh, originally. Was he? Because he was born from his mother. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, because she. Oh. But Ryuko. Right. She's completely. Ryuko. Yeah. She is lab grown. Yeah, she was in vitro. Yep. So that whole thing with the picture. At the, all right, that kind of makes sense. That's why she's not because in the photo. she's not. Oh, she didn't exist. Fuck. I didn't even catch that at all. Yeah. What the fuck? So yeah, Doctor Midorikawa is both of their father. One butterfly og biologically. But she's test tube in a and way. She, yes, she's yes. A, she was an in vitro yes. lab grown. Okay. Baby. So she, she he's her father in that sense. Maybe even genetically. I don't know if that's ever said. He it might be genetically, but we don't know. He's her father in the sense that he created her. Yep. Yeah. And so. she also basically has big computer brain. She can upload, download shit. She can mess with computers through her eyes. Yep. She interfaces with technology. Oh, that eyes. makes sense. Oh, every, I was, yeah. Every oh, time God. her irises went every yeah every time her irises went blue, that's what that was. Dude, yes. that confused the fuck out of me. That's what was going on. She was she was she was uh, linking up with technology. She was linking area. up with a lot of information all at once and was able to transfer data, you know, simultaneously, and she was able to like transfer data um to like common rider's helmet and such to you know and even upload her own soul and that's and that's what ends up happening when she dies was that she already uploaded her conscience to or not conscious but well yeah her, they they, spit, they they use the word soul okay she uploaded at her least soul in, at directly least to importantly at least in the translated. translated subtitles they use the word soul synonymously with prana she up she uploaded her soul directly to Common Rider's helmet to Common Rider One's helmet, because the entire from what I understood was that 
um, towards the end, Butterfly Og was supposed to accept the helmet and then upload his soul into the helmet, but he refuses that. They both, yeah, yeah, that is that is an important aspect of Butterfly Og and Common Rider is that they both choose to allow themselves to die rather than take the place of the other one in the helmet. But um, Hongo does... Hongo does end up in the helmet. It does ha- end up in the helmet. Not he by d- his own choice, though. Yep. Wait. Yep. That when they what? When, when Butterfly Og and Common Rider fade away in the when, when they do the stupid fucking soap suds thing that we <laughs> both hate. Oh let's, my let's hold up to fucking hold god. Up, shelf that for a second. Shelf that for a second. When they disappear, when they both die in front of Butterfly Og's throne and then disappear like that, that's why. Because bo- either one of them <laughs> could have uploaded themselves into the helmet with Roriko because she was already in the helmet. Yep. And there's only room for one more soul in there. And so both of them choose suicide, like actual spiritual suicide, over taking the other one's place. They respect each other that much by the end of the movies that they refuse to live if the other one can't. And that's fucking wild. Dude, I'm kind so of... even if I didn't like Butterfly Og's plan, which I do, I would still respect the fuck out of him as a character. I, You guys just kind of blew me away. I'm... Yeah, yeah it's, dude, and it's, it's, they, they don't say almost anything about it. They, it's all visual. Yep. It's almost all visual. Yeah, they, now it, that you're saying it makes, it does make actually, fucking um, sense. Actually, Butterfly Og is actually the one who brings it up that there's not enough room because they, like, he can tell he's also interfacing with a lot of technology and stuff this, in a similar way to Rurikoda, the way that she does. Yep. And so he can tell when he briefly is inside of the helmet, when his prana briefly does go inside the helmet or he interfaces with it in some yes. other way. Yep. Um, he can tell that there isn't enough room for all three of them, and then he knows that she wants Hongo in there too. And so he actually steps out. He's the one that we see first set the example for Hongo. And I think that that's really Hongo's moment to to make that sacrifice for that he needs to do to set straight in his head why his father did what he did. I think that's the moment there is when he decides, no, if you're not going to go, I'm not going to go. Because you stepped back for me. You've made that. He watched someone make the same sacrifice for him. And then he does it back. That fucked me up a little bit. Yeah, it was. That was some serious shit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm speechless right now. Yeah, and even like Ichimonji, who was a common writer too. Mm-hmm. He was like very sad because after they po- they both dissipate. You know he's by himself again. Yeah, Ichimonji is the yeah he he's who we've been calling Common Rider two the entire time. His name is Ichimonji, but yeah he's like this loner guy who um just he's just he says he likes motorcycles because you can enjoy solitude in this like really shit eating like I, I feel hate, that I, I fucking hate that. my life but I'm gonna do what I want kind of way. It's a freedom, a freedom to suffer. Yeah. A freedom to enjoy the suffering yeah. you were gonna have anyway. Well, we all suffer. Yeah, no, that's day. that's that's what he's that's what basically what he's saying is like if I have to suffer for being alive, I might as well enjoy it. Just listen to the bad religion song "Suffer" off their album "Suffer." Just like you got to listen to "Bad Company" by Bad Company off of the album "Bad Company." Uh, no, <laughs> fuck Bad Company. <laughs> I just love using that as an. I, just love, I love bringing that up. That like, if you played that, it's on, just because you say "bad company" like five times. Well, that's why. I always thought it was funny because I would like going back to the day when you had to listen to music on an iPod. You know, you would see like the iPod. The fuck, yeah, yeah. Back in the day with the iPod. I know? used to use a Walkman, dog. Oh my god. I put American Idiot and Dookie on that shit. And I'd walk for miles just listening to that CD over and over and. I over. can just picture in. I can just imagine scroll like the the way the titles would show up, or it would be like the. The song name, then the band name, then the album name, and it's just bad company, bad company, bad company. I always thought that was hilarious. I would sit there and laugh at it. Like I would listen to the song just to laugh at that arrangement of title. I thought that was funny. Uh, John, say say something before I get us out of here. I, before I fucking dig into something that I'm gonna fucking laugh my ass. Off okay, about. all right. So the whole should we go? Oh, should we go back and yeah. talk about Butterfly Og's plan? Oh my Since god, we've teased yes. That a lot. yes. Okay, so the reason we had to clarify a lot of stuff about Butterfly Og, especially uh, the function of the Shocker program and the AI, yes. I, the AI named I, I yep. yeah, I, uh, I. was to maximize the hum- collective human happiness. And so every the other way that the <laughs> the Ogs kind of proposed really seemed pretty shitty. And I'm sure that a lot of people uh, are going to think the way that I don't think was shitty was pretty shitty. 
So let's go over everybody's plan before we get into Butterfly Og. Mm -hmm. Let's go over everybody's uh, happiness plan. So we talked about Spider Og, who wanted to exterminate all non-Ogs. So he was going for, you know, basically Omnicide. Yep. Which is probably not pretty cool. I I don't think. I'm not really cool with Omnicide. (laughs) No. I don't really want to kill everything. Not, well, depends on what you mean by kill, and we'll get to that in a moment. Because I don't think Butterfly Og would really be killing anybody. Really? So yeah, that's what I kind of got from him. I don't think he didn't want to kill anybody. It's I. I, it, I, I it sounds like he didn't want to, but no, sounds like I don't he even think had he, to. I think it. Def- I think it depends on how you define kill, and we'll talk about that when we get the butterfly on. Because, because I'm, he I'm, says he, the prana is like an afterlife it's preserved. kind of. It's yeah, preserved. Like a preserved life or something. Let, yeah. So uh, don't you? Uh, isn't, on, isn't that what the spider wants to do too? You want? No, to, he just wanted to kill everybody. No, he wanted to oh, kill he did, oh, Spider Og was working for Shocker. He he was like just doing his own thing. He was basically just a hitman. Yep. He and his care. his idea of happiness, he says multiple times, is killing people. He just wants to he just wants to murder. He just likes to do that murder, and so his whole deal was my idea of an ideal happiness for all of humanity is for all of humanity in quotes to only be Ogs and everyone else to be fucking dead. Yep, I do recall that. That was his idea of happiness, and then so There's... the next one that we mainly talk about, we don't really see spy, uh, Scorpion Og. Doesn't have a plan. She no just bummer. gets murdered and then comes. She just gets fucking murked. So uh, Scorpion Og. Anybody who sees this movie, I want you to go and if you don't already know about Warhammer 40,000, Warhammer 40K, go and look up a Slaneshi demonette. Tyler doesn't agree with me. No, I'm not, I didn't. No, I didn't say that. But I, I completely believe that the visual design for Scorpion Og was I ripped off. I said they looked similar, but she didn't have a half bald head. She had a cap on that. It was shaved. Scorpion. No, it wasn't shaved. It, w- it was shaved. It was sh- no. It Half wasn't. of her head was shaved. It was shaved. No, she it had was a, like a mask. And she had, had a scorpion a, on the head. Nope, it was shaved. That was on. That the was side. she was shaved. Half yes, her was. head was shaved. Bullshit! That's not what I saw. It was shaved. All right, all right, okay. Closer to the demonette than you thought. So she didn't Whatever. really have a plan. I'm assuming that it would have involved some kind of murder orgy. Again, similar to the Eldar, oh, if you know awesome. if you know anything literally, about 40k, yeah, yeah. So the uh, quick 40k lesson Nerds. for people who don't know, no, <laughs> they literally there, there was a species of technologically advanced space elves that evolved from slugs that partied so hard that they created a rape murder god. Whoa, whoa! If you don't like 40k, but you like the sound of that as a fiction, go look at some 40k. But just remember, it's all a metaphor. I'm unsure. Do not take it serious. Do do not admire anyone in those stories. I'll just leave it there. <laughs> They're all bad guys. They're all bad guys. Yeah. They are, and the authors intend them to be. Read 40K responsibly, because some people get weird Nazi ideas about it. Danger Dan, I'm sure you're listening, and I know you like Warhammer, whatever. Hey, what up, Dan? I guess we don't get along as badly as I assumed we would. <laughs> but so we got, who else? Bat Og. Bat Og. Bat Og wanted to do the Mind Slave virus. Yep. Spread the d- disease. Yeah. yeah. His his whole fucking... He and Wasp Og both had the Mind Slave idea, but different angles on it. He wanted to spread the COVID. He had different... They both have a different angle on the Mind Slave idea. Dude, actually, I would, I would have... Uh, dude, if they had made a Pangolin Og, I would have died. That would have so, been really good. <laughs> actually, it would have been pretty controversial, and I probably would have liked that a lot, because I like controversial shit, so... But continue. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just trying. So, to, I'm, try, I'm just trying to put COVID in here. The difference between Bat Og and Wasp Og is that Bat Og's Bat Virus creates mindless automata that just follow his will, whatever they, whatever he says. They don't do anything on their own. But Wasp Og's pheromone mind. Well, no, they were all robots because he didn't trust humans in general at all. So he just built automatons. Or uh, no, no, no. I don't mean literal automaton. I well, don't... that's what he had in Was his it? facility. Yeah. Why did they all melt then because when they died? Uh, because, uh, dude. <laughs> yeah, but they, I was they, explicit, that they explicitly out. said that only agents of the organization melt that way when Dude. they died as an infosec procedure. Okay, now we're pushing the buttons here. For one, I cannot, do it. I cannot take seriously the goddamn Mr. Fucking Clean Scrubbing Bubbles goddamn yeah. dissipation foam. No, it bullshit. looked like shit. It did look like shit. I was trying to figure out why it dissipated into foam. I like, understand why they want the operatives to disappear completely. It was in it's infra- yeah, information security. It's information security. But the but, bat dude had they were all robots because he didn't trust people in general. Even what, what's her name, R- Roduko? Roduko. Yeah, R- Roduko. Because she was shooting at him, and she was like, "Oh yeah, of course they're robots," because he still doesn't oh, trust oh, no, anybody. Oh you're, you're right. But then they were all even that whole stadium. He had that whole stadium like on because he's they're on a stage. I but I thought though my understanding of that was that all of the servants that when Rodrigo got there were automata, 
but that when he knocked her out and kidnapped her and mind slaved her or didn't didn't actually mind slave her but when he kidnapped her and knocked her out that he i thought those were clones of rudico no. they, because they have cloning technology because rudico exists yes they do but so they, assuming... no, they were all robots okay or I'd... automatons or whatever you want to call them mm. They were all because they, you, you remember they looked like fucking the droids in Star Wars. They had no, the, the, the ones that the ones when she got there did. But yeah, the one all that, of them were. All of them in the crowd in the stadium in the in the stage area. All right, my turn to say I didn't see that. No, because I, I I thought they were Rudico. No, I, I, they were I got like that Rudico. for sure. I oh, caught okay. that because that's still the beginning of the movie. When okay, I was, so like, yeah, then, attention. then we do have a weird thing to explain here. So there's no reason that they... I, no, there is no reason they should have been melted, which is so fucking weird. Why do they melt in bubbles? So Johnny and I were talking about this on the way home from the movie. It's never clearly explained how they make that happen. So it's possible that they could be using some... Just whatever method they're using, it might work on non-organic beings. And I'm... We're well, so, obviously, we have to, because it does it to the helmet. Yeah, we have to assume... Yeah, that's true. Well, it does it to the outside of the helmet. But still, it's still an inanimate object. It's not biological. Yeah, no, you don't know. The scarf does dis- the, the scarf. Exactly! No, okay, no, fair cop. The scarf, Sorry, the scarf that, disappears dude, that, completely. That, that scrubbing bubble shit but their clothes, gets me. But their clothes also disappear, too. So we know that it does... No, we... Okay. No, yes! no, 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 no. That's... So that dude, no, Tyler, that answers your fucking question. Why are you freaking out? Just because I, I do that scrubbing bubbles. We just, shit just gets me so hard. We not just, hard here, but hard in my brain. I mean, we've arrived at the conclusion that whatever they're using to make them disappear works on non-organic beings. Yeah, Mister so Clean. There's no reason it shouldn't. <laughs> if it works on a jacket or a scarf or a motorcycle helmet, why would it not work on a robot? So there you go. Yes. Scene explained. There you go. Scene explained. Boom out of bang. I don't know. I. Dude, I just that scrubbing bubbles shit. It looks stupid. It's it visually it looks terrible with the rest of the movie. Dude, you, I was just you were sitting next to me the whole time in the theater and every fucking time they disappeared in scrubbing bubbles, I just started cracking the fuck up. Yeah, I just I could not take it seriously no, at all. No, it really it takes away from the gravity of a it lot does. of scenes. Because it really do, it really in a serious way it takes away from the gravity of a lot of scenes. I, I was I was like telling to Mike, I was like, if if I have an opportunity to ask for Hideko Ano to come to G Fest, I'm gonna ask him, Why in the hell did you <laughs> think that it was a good idea for all these inanimate objects and as well as these augmentations to dissipate in fucking bubbles Scrubbing they could have bubbles. just made it ashes yeah exactly they could that would have been cool they could have just made it anything other than what they did or they could just combust and they internally combust they literally could just fade off the screen and i would have accepted that more easily than kinda i would like the bubbles. Thanos in a, uh, i don't know maybe i, don't I mean know. Fuck thanos kinda, too i mean he kind of dissipated like in you know like yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 ashes, yeah. Fuck know. Thanos, but also, yeah, kind of the the ashes from the snap. Yeah. yeah, something more like that. Something that doesn't look visually stupid, like actually comically stupid. Because I mean, we're talking about ser- like characters that we're supposed to care about, right? That we've spent half a movie getting to know. I mean, in serious situations, yeah. and then they're fucking. Wow! Oh no! This character that I have been now that I care about a little bit now is Turned dead to now. Bubbles. But I'm looking at her as a fucking pile of bubbles. Like, what do I? <laughs> dude. And then it's just like, boop, 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 boop. like dude, dude. Stupid. Mr. It Cle- looks dumb. Mr. Clean's on the job. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, honestly, he's not doing though, a good job. It could be I, fire him. I mean, they love. Oh yeah, one thing. I mean, I, he's doing a good job at cleaning, but it, one nah. thing I did notice when they did dissipate in the bubbles, they did leave like a shadow figure, like yes, in, like like a like yeah. a burnt area, basically. like in Hiroshima. When people oh, in the bombings and the shadows, yeah, yeah, the shadows. Oh, I caught. I don't know if you guys did, but I noticed. I noticed it. the shape. No, yeah. I didn't connect it with that, but I did notice that they did leave behind a darker residue. Yeah, that's exactly. the first thing that popped in my brain when I saw it, especially that's, with the spider og. That's a good catch. The spider og is the first one that caught my attention, and then I think, well, what's her name? Ruko Ru- 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 what? Rudico. Rudico. Yeah. Fuck, I'm ignorant. I don't care. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I noticed that, and the first thing that popped in my brain was. Godzilla 54 and just Hiroshima in general. That's, that's, that's a good catch. But I know it could have, like, with the whole bubble dissipating, that could have been something that they were also doing for effects wise and, like, the original common writer. But Bad. still, I don't know. Yeah, it might have been a practical limitation of know. the original series. Yeah. But for this, you could have done anything else. Yes. You had 50 years of I mean, it was, to, and it's also, it's also, like, Shin common writer. So, like, you know, you can do whatever you want for this film and put something completely different that's not from the original series but i know they're trying to make a lot of callbacks to the original series but yeah but i feel like that's a if you're gonna do callbacks they should be adding to it positively instead yes. of making a lot of really good potentially very good scenes feel a lot less serious and yeah. important 
See, I know me and Mike don't know jack shit about this. Sh- I mean, I feel yeah, like, it could be a perspective thing too. I feel like you might have. I mean, you said you haven't watched it, but just the community you hang out in. Yeah, I just have a good. well understanding of it. Do they do that in the show? Um, like I said, do I you know at all. No, are, the, are the augments a part of the original show? The augments are part of the are original. they you yep. were telling me though that they were not biologically augmented though the animal thing wasn't so much a thing in the original series uh, yeah because later on when you're continuing with all the common writer series i believe they start like changing that but i don't realistically um i don't remember exactly because i've not watched in or even looked into common writer that much oh, i remember i uh, wasn't it on the way back on the way back from the movie you were telling me that there was like a series like a big difference between the augs in the original series yes and the movie. yes there is because um i believe like when it came to the actual augs and how they were created must i believe it was different but i don't really exactly know mm. Because I didn't look into it much enough or even watch the series. Okay. That kind of surprises me that you wanted to go see this movie then if you were... I because I it's Tokusatsu. Like it's just I mean, special yeah. effects, you know, practical effects done. That's why I, I wanted to go see it and it was you know, that was it, it it really did meet the anticipation that I wanted for this movie too. It, it, Possibly. Yeah, and when when you asked me to go to this movie with you guys, I was, you guys know, and all all of our Godzilla fan community that listens to us, our Tokusatsu fans are gonna fucking hate me, but I fucking hate Power Rangers, <laughs> and I thought I was walking to a goddamn Power Rangers movie for this, but honestly, I did like this movie quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Like I was pretty. I was pretty surprised how much I enjoyed the movie. Yeah. Even though it's, like, fucking ridiculous in a lot of ways. But I enjoyed the fuck out of it, man. Mm-hmm. And I'm really glad I went and saw it with you guys. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad we're doing this because this has actually been a great conversation about this movie, <laughs> quite honestly. I'm having a lot more fun talking about the movie than I did watching it. <laughs> Dude, me too. <laughs> I did not enjoy it very much. All right, let's um let's get into the translation dialogue. Oh. There's no fucking way she told him this is hella crazy. This was Rudico. She's like a very straight-laced character that just seems to be completely unemotive in, yes. for a lot of the movie. Like she doesn't connect with people or understand. Uh, a lot a big theme in the movie is not understanding other people. It's just isolation and alienation. Yes, exactly. And yeah, because she she doesn't trust yeah, people. Yeah, she doesn't or trust people enough. She's on top of that again, a lab grown person. So she doesn't even yep. have the most basic commonality with all other people in that they were born. You know, she's as alien as you can be and be a human being. And so, there's that. <laughs> See, I'm glad. Because I remember, I so that's why it's I weird. I leaned over to you a few times. I was busy watching the action and not reading the subtitles. I was like. Bro, what did I miss? Yeah, and so um, also she's a teenager. So yep. yeah, what, what? we haven't we haven't mentioned the part that she's actually a, she is a teenager. She's like this computerized teenage genius. I thought she was like an adult, but no. They, th- they, then you were like they mention at one bro, point that she's, she's a like kid. underage. I'm like oh. early on in the movie they do mention that she's a kid. I don't even remember that at all. But this is why it's confusing to all of us that this character who is written to be such a she's she's just written to be a frowny face. A very serious frowny face. And then at one point she says that something, she describes something as hella crazy. Yeah, I feel like, like, like it's, <laughs> it's got to be a translation. Dude, we, there's no It's fuck- got to be a translation. Thing. There's no fucking way she pulled an Eric Cartman and said, this is hella crazy. Or Cartman would say, you got a hella name. That's what Cartman would say he did. And then the guys are like, Cartman, quit saying fucking hella, you fucking idiot. And he's like, you guys are hella stupid. <laughs> Dude, I'm having a hard time believing that she said hella crazy just yeah. the word hella so that's in general that makes me wonder how accurate the translation in the rest yeah. of the movie is and how much we're losing through, then, a tran- through this early of a translation and then my donald trump circle word oh, no. dipshit there's no way the chameleon said i'm salty i believe that more than i believe i don't saying hella. i don't because he i mean he was obviously like well, no, no. I think I'm even thinking about it in a bad way because there's no real way to connect vocabulary with 
personality. You know, I mean, it's all this, a translation, of course. Yeah, but they, they were trying like, to make saying problem. salty like that. That's such an American, and that's like a street American slang. Yeah. That's not even like actual American slang. So to see fucking the chameleon be like, I'm mad salty right now, just really took me out. It's like, there is no I mean, I'll fight you no on street way. slang versus real slang, but I agree that he wouldn't have said it. Well, I mean, whatever, but, like, normal normal people don't say salty usually, but, like, people, I, I don't even know where I'm going with that. Whatever, fuck me, continue. <laughs> well, I mean, I, 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 I understand where you're going with that, but it's just now... When people use that term salty, you know, they feel, I forgot what the emotion is. They feel, they feel hella. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they just feel very just pissed. You know, they feel very irritated, which not a lot of people say, you know, those two terms. They just say salty, you know, but... I didn't realize how old the word hello was. I thought it was like new slang when I first started hearing it, but then you can go back to oh, like, bro. fucking that was no season, doubt. That was season two of South Park, and that was 98. Okay, yeah. because I don't, I'm, I don't, I don't I'm trying to look it up right now. I don't know when No Doubt came out with the song Hella Good, but I'm sure everybody has heard that even if they didn't want yeah. to. And, and I didn't realize salty, that that's what it was called. Yeah, but then salty so is old. like a new slang term that came out, you know, in, within the past decade. So it's just... That's why when I was hearing... But he was a younger character, though, so they might just be taking a younger person's Japanese slang and mm -hmm. trying to turn that into the closest equivalent, of equivalent. to a young person's English slang, uh, which yes. is... Tra translating slang is very, very difficult. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you're never going to get the intention right. Yeah. Because it's, be, it's, it's steeped in the culture, it's steeped in the history of even the language itself, and then, you know, obviously the psychology of the person using it, so there's no way to translate slang effectively. Yeah. So I think that's probably why... It is what it is, in probably including the hella thing that we disagree that we disagree with the the translator on. I don't, I don't know. I think it's probably just trying to take, mo like current Japanese slang among young people and trying to give it the same flavor as. Hey, if anyone speaks Japanese and listens, yeah, to us, give us a voicemail about. Please Japanese let me slang. know if she literally says hella. In that, that would be really cool to know. That would be fucking sweet, and I want to know so badly because if she does, I. That would actually bump my score up a little bit. I give you three dollars if you can tell us <laughs> that it is. I'll set it aside right today. It's just you know that's no I I understand. <laughs> I heard that one. That was loud. You didn't have to bring it up. <laughs> no, it could have been a gentleman about it. There's supposed to be a fart mic going on, but we ain't got the fart mic, so. But I was dragged to another city for it. <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit. As you should. Um. The fact That's that hella lame. The, the fact that and I'm salty about it. The fact that you guys bring up the translation <laughs> shit with, with both of those terms, is that they there could be some there could be some translation yeah. errors in the dialogue. That's and true, and it's an early translation too. So we might even in a couple years get a different translation of the exactly. dialogue. Exactly. <laughs> Yep. That's a problem. It, that's the general problem when we're talking about subtitling or uh, translating movies for subtitles for a, a language that is so different yeah. from, you know, like just structurally and in its origins, different from the language you're translating it into. Yeah. Rather than something like saying translating a French a movie of French origin into Spanish or Portuguese, exactly. it's going to be really different coming from Japanese to yep. English. Yep. So we might get a better translation, maybe in a maybe within the next year or so, mm -hmm. or if the movie becomes popular, gains a good fan base, or yeah. like you know, common writer fans might put in the work and give us a more accurate yep. translation. Yep, and I in the and future. I and I do see that happening as oh, well. Yeah. I do oh, see yeah. that. Fans are famous for this. Fans love doing this kind of shit, myself included. Yep, it's just gonna happen eventually. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe we can all have a better movie experience for it. Yeah, that is very true. I do see that at very. I do see that happening very soon. Um, I, I, I know for a fact we got really deep into this movie, and um, we still haven't talked about Butterfly Og's plan. Oh my God, we yeah, have let's not. get into that. All right, so more. Butterfly Og, my bay for this movie, aside from Wasp yeah, Og, because Wasp Og trying to wrap up this movie. Wasp Og, we're already on like me. almost two hours right now. All right. I, it doesn't even feel like no, it. it doesn't. Like, dude, I feel like we've only been talking about this shit for like an hour. Okay, so. This is rooted in another sci-fi concept that I love and hold dear to my heart, uh, mind uploading. So the whole idea behind Butterfly Og, his whole plan for 
maximizing human happiness was to take away the thing that makes us unhappy the thing that contributes the most to making us unhappy and that's our body i was about to say humanity our Our body just just our bodies though not necessarily our souls right no his the so the idea is our soul is the prana yeah so butterfly og he and their father dr midorikawa and ruriko um the doc and the sister put most of the work into developing the data basically what's going to be a database where they're going to create a virtual reality for people to inhabit after the extraction yeah it sounds real bad when you say it that way the extraction of their prana he's going to kill them and capture kill in air quotes in my opinion kill them and capture their souls and upload them into this computer which is a time-honored concept in sci-fi that has been horrifying people for decades and i love it i unironically support this plan i do well, that's the great thing about sci-fi is that it always reflects on what humanity is scared of at yeah. that time in history, like uh, Jurassic Park yeah. and uh, Westworld. I like Jurassic Park. Though we've ta- yeah, we've talked about this before. Where yeah. the, 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 in the novel, at least, in Jurassic Park, it's a big side tangent. The, it's not so much the cloning aspect of it, but it's actually the conflict, the, the conflict over intellectual property is actually the central conflict of Jurassic Park. At least in the novel, in the list, at least in the original novel. Did you read? That? I haven't read. I've read. It, I've read course. it, but I haven't seen it. We. That's. This is what we talked about. The. the that's one time. right. Yeah. You have never seen. Oh my. Yep. I have read. Fuck. I, I like Michael Crichton as an author, but I've never seen any movie based on his books. Not the Andromeda Strain. I like the Andromeda Strain a lot. Not the Andromeda Strain. Not Jurassic Park. There was something else. Too. All right, dude. We have to do Jurassic Park and get this bitch out of here. <laughs> Because I think that would give you a different... That's a different one view. movie that I probably don't even have to fucking watch before we record. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'll, I'll reread it, too, so then I can Do you, give a comparison. Oh, you should. All right, we should plan... How, how fast can you read a book? Uh, <laughs> depends. I'll just use an audiobook. So, <laughs> That's fine by me, So too. nine. I think, I think Jurassic Park was like nine and a half hours as an audiobook. I walk everywhere all the time, so I have, pl- I have nine hours. Uh, <laughs> just yeah. tell me when you want it read by we're gonna Red plan quotes. that out because i actually would really love to yeah hear i think the it'd be difference cool. between because i grew up dude and then the, the um, movie came out the year i was born so i've then, grown up with jurassic park my whole it was my favorite movie when I was we could a get kid. chris about that too because chris was taught because chris right. was involved in that discussion of jurassic park too yep chris. my buddy chris yes yeah. uh, mustache we can, chris we can try mustache chris that's funny <laughs> I mean, he had a mustache the last time I saw I him. I thought you were going to say a sexy, muscular Chris. I mean, that too. Big Chris. That too. I was going to keep that part to myself, though. Patrick Swayze. <laughs> I love you, Chris. <laughs> but yeah, that would be cool. So back to, back to again, Butterfly Og. Yep. Yeah, sorry. So Butterfly Og aims to remove what he considers to be the primary source of human suffering, and that is our bodies. So... What does that entail? It means you're never going to be hungry again. You're never going to be scared again. You've already, di- yeah. you've already died. There's nothing to be afraid There's of. Nothing your body can't be endangered. If your prana is safe inside, assuming that your prana is safe inside of this structure, you're not in any danger again, ever. Oh, now I'm putting this in a weird religious fucking And since there's away. no danger, yeah, you're it's supposed like to. It's like the you're actual vision of God. Yeah. Like, yes. Because since we... That was the robes. That was the throne. Yeah. Fuck! That is it, huh? Yeah. So the movie is an implicit rejection of Christianity too. Holy, yep. It's so weird that it's copaganda. <laughs> it's weird that it's copaganda, but rejecting Christianity. This Dude. is what copaganda looks like in other countries. In in our country, it's blue bloods. That's and why I'm glad you got in I'm, Japan. I'm we glad get you're Rider. here for this because I would do all of that bullshit when it just went whew, right over. Oh my yeah! Shout out to head. the YouTube. Shout out to the YouTube channel. Skip intro for my all of my knowledge about media analysis. Oh, were you watching YouTube videos on this movie? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, he's got a series about copaganda oh, okay. that I've been keeping up with for a while. Say I should have, but I was watching goddamn petty males. Stupid shit I care people. about. Don't don't yeah. spend your free time doing what I do. It's not fun. Yeah, same here. Don't don't watch petty males. <laughs> but yeah, so he w- that's that's his whole angle, and it's I don't know if he's right, but I've always liked the idea of mind uploading. I have because so, uh, actually there's re- a movie I'm trying to think of that does it, but I can't think of the fucking movie. I mean, the Matrix is. The Not same the basic Matrix. no, but it is the same basic concept. The idea of keeping people living in a different reality to avoid the reality outside. There's like a horror movie I like, but I can't remember what the fuck it is. But I feel like it does that same fucking thing. Probably. It's like horror sci-fi. It's uh 
I, I can't imagine there's only one. Yeah, I, I <laughs> just can't think. What, is it just a matrix? I don't know. Well, what I don't do you know what you're thinking of. I'm no, no what, what? I, I didn't have one in mind. Oh, yeah. But I, I, this is such a broad idea that's so entrenched in the culture of sci-fi and to an extent horror that I doubt there's only one movie about it. You know, it, yeah. it, it would surprise me if there were only one, if Kamen Rider were the first to put this into action. Actually, have you ever seen, um, shit, 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 shit. What is it called? In English, it's called Pulse. It's a 2000, um, Cairo. Um, is this J or K horror? J. That's J horror? Yeah, no. it's like 2000, 2001, I think. It's very late 90s or very early 2000s, it, it's, but it's a movie about basically pu- the opposite pulse of this. Pulse in English? Pulse. Oh! Cairo, yeah. I just thought of the movie. Uh, I think it's Possessor. Possessor. Possessor is more, is if... If it's the one I'm... Th- isn't that the one with the assassin that takes over bodies? I think so. I wouldn't say that's the same. It no. does involve the same kind of mind-uploading technology. Okay, that's what I'm to- thinking of. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're, I, I, I'm wrong. You're, you're on the right track there, yeah. Yeah. It's not exactly... It's the same kind of technology, but used to a different degree and for a different application. But Transfer same- bodies from one person yeah, to the- Yeah, yeah. Kind of like, uh, what's that fucking show? Spoilers that for Possessor. Netflix? Uh, there was a show on Netflix that did the same fucking thing, too. I'm not mm, familiar with that. Yeah. It's not Ozark. It's uh, it was only like one se or one or two seasons or some shit. Ah, uh, whatever. I haven't watched shows on Netflix in forever. Yeah, I only watched like two episodes of that, and I didn't really get into it. But mm. that's a, that's also what it's made. But Possessor is the one I was. Yeah, thinking I've seen of Possessor for sure. That's uh, is that, that's Cronen. Oh no, is that is that Lee Winnell or is that Cronenberg? I don't know. Fuck, I don't remember. That was part. I, I know. I remember. I watched that on a weekend where I was binging like seven movies a day with my then girlfriend. So I don't remember a lot about any of the ones that I saw during that time. But oh, yeah. No, no. I'm just kidding. I wish, dude. <laughs> no, it was. It wasn't that. No, we were literally just sitting there watching seven fucking movies a day. That's why I didn't say it out loud. So. Nope. <laughs> nope. It's not even. It wasn't even fun. Like you. Think I'm it respect. Was. I'm a douche, but I'm respectful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one who brought it. I'm the one who brought up the situation. <laughs> Just like me and the monsters. But so what do you uh, what what do you guys <laughs> What do you guys think about this plan? What do you guys think about mass mind uploading as a method to avoid human suffering? I, I think it's I've fucked. never I've never really thought about that. Like it's just something that I've never really had any thought process about. Mm-hmm. Or I mean, it's had, a weird idea. It's not something you really come up no, with on your own. It's, well, it's, <laughs> it's something that I don't usually talk about. So realistically, I don't have an answer to it. What's your gut feeling? If somebody told you yeah. that they were going to strip your soul out and put it in a computer, what would you say? I'd probably... Assuming would, you took them seriously. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I, 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 that's, that's why I'm like trying to think about that. Um, I, I honestly would be opposed to it. Mm-hmm. I would be. I just I think it'd be too too much for like my own capacity of mind to really think about. But I got a real good question for you in that oh, case. Go ahead. What do you think heaven is then? Oh God, yeah, that's what. Right. What is the difference between this oh. kind of mind uploading and the con and the Judeo Christian concept of heaven? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Some really powerful guy is taking your soul and he has utter control over it. And he's putting it in a place of safe storage forever that's supposed to be really fucking cool to experience. There's no difference. You know what I say? The only difference is how you get in. Aliens. Aliens. That's... (laughs) (laughs) You guys can't see. I just made my hair look... I don't even know if I My point is that it's not such a foreign concept. No, it's not. No, it's not. When you phrase it in... It it also points to another... No, it's kind of more of a cultural world aspect. Yeah, it's way. it yeah. points to the idea that we're a lot more scared of technology uh, explanations or causes that are technological versus causes that are supernatural. Ooh, what if that we is have a fear. what holy fuck. What if the ancient aliens came down and told our ancestors that when you die your bodies get preserved in these tombs, these sarcophagus that can get uploaded. Oh my fuck. I'm on something here. I really actually don't like the ancient aliens hypothesis in general, but not... There are some of them I do, and a lot of them I don't. For a couple reasons. I'm a big believer. The Fermi paradox grabs me by the balls every time I hear it. Every time I hear it phrased in a different way, it strengthens its grip. I don't think that aliens exist. I just don't. What? I I think... How can you not think aliens exist? Look look into the Fermi. I'm not going to pretend that I can give you a good explanation of this 
because I it's something I've been looking into for years because it's one of those things I do want to believe. I do want to, but I don't want to. So I can't let my want to believe get in the way of the information that there is. So you're like Agent Mulder in the X-Files. I've never I seen want the X-Files. to believe. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm actually, I'm glad you actually knew. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you knew it was I know Mulder and Scully, but I've never seen the X-Files. <laughs> Dude, you should watch But no, I, so I don't think that there are aliens. I don't. You can at me if you want. But if you do any serious looking, you're into, on my show, and I'm about to at you. If, no, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm just saying. If you do any serious looking into the reasoning behind the different explanations of the Fermi paradox and what it really entails, I don't think that you can on, intellectually, honestly say that there are aliens. Mostly because we would we would literally see them. They would not be able to hide. If you have a if you have a civilization that is visible, okay. Let me. Um, big big caveat here. I don't think that there are aliens. I was about to say, this sounds like this is going to go whole. I don't think that there are aliens world. that are capable we'll give this of communicating like with other minutes. species. Five minutes top. There might be aliens. Then we're going to wrap no, no, this no. up. Basically, if there, are, if there are aliens, they're at the same technological level as us, or they're at a lower technological level. I don't know level. if I believe that, though. Because any civilization that is capable of like real, meaningful endeavors in space travel is going to be visible from space. And if we're talking about like civilizations that are higher than us on the Kardashev scale, we're talking about things that are going to be visible just in terms of their waste heat. You can't hide waste heat. You just can't. Infrared radiation that comes off of just the heat that it takes to run a civilization. If we're looking at anything more than a planetary civilization like we have, and we don't even have one full planetary civilization, but we are visible from space, right? You can see pictures of us from space, in the visible spectrum even. But even if you're trying to hide that visible spectrum and even other spectra of light, you're going to give off heat, which is a kind of light. And you can't hide that heat. You can make it pass through as many layers of protection as you want, but it will radiate out of the outside eventually. But what if we don't have the technology advanced enough to detect we have I heat? We have IR telescopes. Wow. The tech exists. It's such a simple thing. You, you, and then what about... Tyler, like, I'm talking... You, you've seen infrared cameras, right? Oh, yeah, of course. You can make something like that because all that does is collect infrared light. You can make a large infrared camera that's called a telescope. That's all it is. But what we if have they found technology more advanced? That's called Clark Tech. We're talking about technology what so the advanced. What fuck is Clark Tech? I literally am about to define it. Clark Tech is technology that is so advanced that it is indistinguishable from magic, and that's what would be required to be able to effectively hide the waste heat of a civilization that can travel through space in a, in a meaningful way. But what if they have that, then? Then we're talking about a technology that is not even something we can Comprehendable consider. Comprehendable to we us. We can't consider it right now. But no. we, if we can't comprehend it, you can't consider it. We can't, we have to. But what if you can consider it, but you just can't comprehend it? You can't rule it. expandable, say, like, 30, 20. Tyler, we're, I'm, I'm just going to throw Occam's razor right at you, dude. <laughs> what, is, what is a better, what is a more concise, what requires imagining the least things that we can't prove? They're not being aliens. They're not being civilizations that would be able to magically hide their waste heat from us. That just not happening, and us being here alone. Or shit we literally can't even fucking imagine. Which one of those things requires the fewest assumptions? Shit we literally can't even imagine. Fuck off. All right. <laughs> I'm getting... You just want to be a contrarian. Oh, of course I do. I always do. I'm a punk rocker. Of course I want to be a contrarian. I want to contradict everyone, piss off everyone as much as I can. Okay, but that doesn't make you right. Of course not! So it's You're point- talking to a god... Oh, I almost said, oh, I almost said a bad word. Uh, I'm a goddamn idiot. <laughs> I don't think you're an idiot. I just think that you don't need to always do that. No, I don't. But I like to. All right, so. All right, let's wrap this movie up. Concept of mind uploading and its relationship to our current Western concept of heaven. Not so difficult to string together and not so strange after all. Mind uploading as a form of salvation. That is what Butterfly Og offers. That is what humanity in this movie rejects. Sorry. I was what? I was, I was going to troll, but you were actually being serious. So. I was just trying to sum up the, no, I know. the gist yeah, yeah, of what yeah. we'd said. I thought you were still talking about Alien. No, I no, mean, I, no about, I was just trying to... I, no, I was about to troll. I'm sorry. My bad. No. My bad. All right. Um, all right. Let's get on. Let's let's write this movie and close this bitch out. Uh, let's right. start with John because I haven't heard from him in a little bit. And this was his movie pick, and he was begging to do this movie. Yeah, so. I was, and I still am. <laughs> Final thoughts, rating, and recommendation. Final thoughts, um, CGI was kind of poo-poo. Yep. CGI was better than Peninsula, though. 
That's not a high bar to clear. No, it's not. So it's, it's a shame. The practical effects though was was really good though. It was it was very nice for what they did, especially for the time that we are now, where practical effect isn't really a common thing, or it's not as used as often as we would like to see in films. Um, and especially the film graining on this film was really nice too, because they gave it that retro aspect feel that the original series is supposed to have. Um, Good call. I forgot about that. So it made me enjoy the movie that much too. Um, to give my final rating on this though, um, what I'm going to give it is actually lower than I really imagined, but it's it's going to be a 6 out of 10 for me. And I do recommend people watching this movie if you like tokusatsu films. A 6? Yeah, just really? because yeah, just because um the thing is that like I still because I'm not really that f- what uh what is it? What is it I'm looking for? There is some stuff that didn't really make sense still, oh, but yeah. I feel like I need to watch it as another time for it to finally come more into that sense for me to understand. Um, which is kind of the reason why I'm I am reading it a six out of ten. Oh, yeah. Mike, how about you, dog? Well, I've done a lot of complaining so far. I don't think it'd be really fair for me to give it anything higher than a four. In terms of my personal enjoyment of the movie, I can't give it higher than a four. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not a fan of the genre in that I have no idea what the genre is about, but um, it's not my kind of movie. I don't like over-the-top, overly stylized, especially not synchronized violence and action. I mm-hmm. hated the action scenes. They were not fun to watch for me. Um, I hated how the corpses disappeared. Uh, I hated Fuck. what they did to my boy Butterfly Og. <laughs> I hated what they did to my girl Scorpion Og. Yeah, that Wasp Og can still enslave me any day. So <laughs> that's actually bringing the that's actually bringing the rating up. Um, yeah, I don't really think I think I got out all of my thoughts that I had about the movie, and even some that I had not had before during mm-hmm. our previous discussion. So I'm going to give it a four. Um, if you vibe with what I've said so far, probably don't watch it. But mm-hmm. if you like tokusatsu films or if you like more of that stylized action you'd probably love it yeah so not my bag but not a bad film probably yep all right so four four out of ten yeah four for me uh for a good old augmented tyler nightmare here um i'm gonna go with john i did like the old school aesthetic shot that they did yeah but you left out something that i like but i know that mike did not like because we talked about it after oh, the, the theater sound. the sound, the sound design i oh, actually oh. just made a note to complain about that and then forgot to do it <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually i person i i love all that old shit because i'm yeah. a i'm a sucker for old media i'm i'm huge into the universal monsters kind of shit i love the show of godzilla yep but pretty much just like that's my only thing I love of Japanese culture is the Godzilla movies, the Showa, Heisei, and Millennium. Yep. And now the Reiwa that we're in, yep. because Shin Godzilla is Reiwa, which I'm guessing that the Shin Kamen Rider is going to be a part of Reiwa also. Mm-hmm. If, uh, For listeners who don't know what that means like me, what are these words? Aren't they the imba- or they're the, the prime ministers? Yes, they're the, the terms of the... Um, Prime ministers that have been running in Japan at that time period. Yes, I believe that's what those like eras the serving prime minister is how you talk about the names of the film era. I think I, I can't that's remember such a correctly. Thing. What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, that's, yes. yeah, that's I think I believe that's how they are presented as. Well, right? I mean, of course, except for the millennium. What the hell is with you guys in hierarchy, Japan? What the fuck? I don't know. I'm just a sucker for Godzilla. That's all I can yeah. say. I don't know. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever seen Kamen Rider. And I enjoyed it a lot more than I really thought I was going to enjoy it, quite honestly. Mm-hmm. And this conversation kind of made me like it more, honestly. Like, you opened my mind to a lot of Mike. Mike opened my mind. Sorry, people can't see me pointing at Mike. <laughs> but I hope Mike not, opened my mind. And John did, too, because you guys pointed out some things that I did not even catch at all in this fucking movie that really was bringing me down Mm -hmm. but then you guys helped me make sense of it more and i kind of like it more like that um 
the action was sweet. I didn't. I hear something we didn't bring up. The the final suit of the second Kamen Rider at yeah. the end. Oh <laughs> God, sucks. I hate that. Oh, you green. know what? I'm changing my score to six point five because we can do that now. I forgot. Yep, we can. Uh, six point five. Sorry. And um, you know what, John? Yeah. That's why I'm giving it to as a six point five. Oh, tight. I was actually struggling between six point five and a seven. Well. well I don't know. You know what? I'll bump it to a seven just because, just from this conversation. So when I left the theater, I was in my brain giving it a 6.5. But just from our conversation that we all had together, I kind of enjoyed this conversation. I mean, I did enjoy the conversation more than the movie, but now I want to rewatch the movie with the conversation we just had mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. see if I can catch everything that we just talked about the religious aspect. And all that other bullshit we talked about that I can't remember right now. But, <laughs> but, but I, I'm going to give it a seven. You okay. know what? I'm going to give it a fucking seven. So with all that, that gives us an aggregate score of 5.83. That's decent. Which is decent, which... 5.83? Yeah, which is so not, not bad. Not quite a 5.9, but it's still higher than... The I'm... movie is okay to certain people. Hey, shut the... I think it, I think whether or not you're going to enjoy it depends heavily on whether or not you like the genre. Yes, exactly. I think it has to be judged in the context of its own genre. Well, or at least in the tradition of its its media tradition. I mm-hmm. suppose because, like I said, because I, I I certainly as an almost exclusively um, I've watched a lot of uh, international horror movies, but not other types of media that come from yeah. around the world. So I definitely don't have the most expansive perspective when it comes to non horror media. So that probably has a lot to do with why I don't like it. See, the main one I only have is Godzilla. Yeah. That's because I'm just, I, I haven't, as we've talked about before, that this guy gives me shit. I don't watch the Gamera films, which I fucking have to, apparently. And Ultra Gamera? I've, yeah, Gamera. Yep. I was it Gamera? I was like, what the hell? Oh, did I? Shit, I'm probably No, there. that's how he always pronounced it. I was like, Chim- Fuck, Chimera? Do I? Gamera, yeah. Chimera? Gum- 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 Gamera. Whatever. Right? I'm on, like, my... 11th beer right now so is that supposed to be like a, a rephrasing of gamma ray i actually don't know because I, I, it all has to do with radiation i'm assuming it's meant to be gamma ray i was well, saying wait a minute or like that based makes on sense. Gamma ray. the origin of gamma is that he was created by the people of atlantis to defend off the gals sorry what the fuck yes yeah what the fuck yeah so the origin story of gamma was he was created in order to defend off the creatures of gauss because it was also one of their creations, and they fucked up, so they made Gamera to basically destroy all the gals who were scattered through the world. That's why he has rockets in his butt? Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, okay. Somebody prove me that it's not meant to be is, a play on Gamera. Is Gamma that Ray. just only the Showa, or... That's supposed to be all of them, but it what was more. It was, fuck? but it was focused more on the Showa, because that's how the Showa won... That's how the Showa era started with Gamera, was you because know, of that. You know where the idea of Atlantis comes from? Mm-hmm. Some what? fucking crackpot politician during the Civil War era made that shit up. What? No. You can, yeah. Well, I thought Nostradamus predicted that. No. Shit. Atlant- no, dude. Predicted? What do you mean predicted? I mean, Atlantis? not predicted, but he wrote about it. Nah. You can he, Nostradamus wrote a lot of shit, but literally all of the stuff that you hear about Nostradamus is just people taking really, really cryptic, unspecific writing and saying what they want about it. Oh, that's a fair cut. Kind of like what I do with media analysis, except shittier. Yeah, like this movie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's just like the Holy Grail. And Jesus himself. Wow. Wow. Oh, I'll shit on Jesus all day. Don't fuck with me. Um, <laughs> what was our 5.83? 5.83. Fuck's at the cinema. 5.83. Scott's hey. sleeping on the couch. So that's fine. Sleepy boy. Oh, yeah. He deserves it. He's had a rough night. But, yep. um. Big Dingus. Yes. Excuse me. Augmented Dingus. Yeah. Do you have a game for us to do? I do have a game. All right. Tight titties. I do have a game. Can I take a wicked yes real quick? Yes. Go ahead. Sweet. I mean, I have this piss jug, but I don't, I won't do that in front of you guys. Yeah, I don't need to see the peener. Well, I was gonna put it on. I was gonna put it on the table, but I still don't want to see the peener. It yeah. is pretty big. Close your fucking eyes. <laughs> True. There, there's a guaranteed way to not have to see something. 
You come with a built-in not seeing mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, lads and lassies, let's play the fucking game. It's time to play the game. To play the game. I've been away for a while, but y'all remember at home I hate games. That's I really true. need to get Scott to do that bump. Nope. <laughs> did, did he just wake up? <laughs> he said nope. <laughs> but yeah, no, I that's... fucking love that. Well, I love that so much. Yeah. Well, the thing is that you don't you don't have to do your best. Just answer A, B, or C. Yeah, bro. Because I'm probably C. gonna suck at this too. Okay, so you're gonna do C. Okay. Well, I'll I'll shoot this first question for you guys. Um. <laughs> Well, this first question is going to be, uh, so there's seven, so this is a guessing game. This is a game that um, I constructed together before we started the recording, um, and it's going to be seven questions. Well, I, technically, we'll do six, and then seven will be like a tiebreaker in case anything is to happen. Aye. So, with that said, it's a multiple choice. And it can consist of, you know, three answers or m four or five, you know. No, it's not going to be that many. I was going to say, what the fuck are you talking about? Twelve options. Twelve options? No, I'm just kidding. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm on 11 beers. <laughs> so, the first question that I have for you guys is, who was the actor that has been in all three Shin Legacy films? Because there has been an actor who has been featured in all the films because I know which character you're talking about but I don't know the guy okay well that's why we get I might too well that's why you gotta guess the the answer for this one I mean we're both probably gonna get the name wrong but I, th I think I think we both know who we're talking about yes you guys know who it's the older guy that was involved with the organization yes of the two guys in suits it's the older one because he was yeah, one of the, the politicians the, in Shin the, Godzilla the, yeah, the mm -hmm. that's why we both, dude. You and me said in the theater that guy looks familiar. Yep. Yeah, Johnny, has, told, yeah, Johnny told me that's who it was. He has been I don't in know all his name three though. movies. I don't know his name either. So that's why I'm gonna have you guys guess. The Fuck name. you. <laughs> so. Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> so. Um. I took you, buddy, off of you. Oh well. Okay. So A. So we have three answers. A is gonna be Takumi uh, Saito. B is going to be Yutaka t uh, Takanoch, um, and C is going to be um, Sosuke uh, Ikimatsu. C. <laughs> okay, C. I, I, saw might... th I saw that name in the credits. I remember that one from the credits. My answer is C. <laughs> well, all right. Well, fuck. I don't know who it is, but it was in the credits. It's I'll... the only one I know for sure was in the movie. I'll just be contradictive, and I'll say B, even though I'm probably wrong. All right, so... Tyler gets a point. What? Because it was Are B. You it was uh, uh, Yutaka um, uh, Takenoch. Yeah, it was him. Boom! Mike! Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know you're not competitive at all. So, all right. Next one. I'm actually quite surprised because even you said you th saw the name of the credits. So oh, I yeah. Like, I, don't I was like, fuck. I'm that's, it's just the one I recognized. Then I very well could have seen the other ones. Well, as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, he's got it in the bag. I'm just going to pick a fucking letter then. So... Next question. So, with uh, Idaki Ano created these films in order to start the new era of films with Tokusatsu, what is the new era of film called? Whoa. Answer A, Millennium. Answer B, Reiwa. Or answer C, Heisei. That's cheating. Tyler just yeah, said it was Reiwa. Yeah, that's unfair in a way. Okay. So. I literally did just explain all of that. Yeah, I know. That's. I so unless I misunderstood, the answer is very well, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's very kinda, well. It's very well, so. I'm going to put dashes for that because. That one, the game got given away early. Yeah, I didn't know that. Was I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to point for that one. No. Okay, so that's fine. No, that's all right. I got, uh, what is it? I got five more questions, so. Okay. So, damn it. This is also, what does the term Shin mean? A, new, B, true, C, godlike, or D, all of the above? All of the above? Yeah, that's another unfair one, too. Yeah, I you said, said that right at the beginning. Yep. Yeah. I have to dash those ones out, too. <laughs> well, this is why we have tiebreakers. Yeah, this is why we have tiebreakers. Well, I'm still 1-0, so. Yeah. 
And that was just on luck, honestly. <laughs> so, out of the three Shin Legacy films, which one was rated the best out of all of them? Oh, that's actually a good one. I think I it's no premature clue. to rate this one. But yeah, it is. I mean... But, I mean, of course, if there's a standing rating. Um, so... Um, no, go yeah, go give us the options. So A is Shin Godzilla, B is Shin Ultraman, and then C is Shin Common Rider. Godzilla. That's so hard. Yeah, I want to say Godzilla. I'm assuming it has the. I I just assume it has the biggest fan base out of the three because it's the one that I, as a non-fan, know about, which is a bad way to guess. But well, I know all three of them have huge fan bases. Yes, they know, do. Godzilla. Shin Godzilla brought the resurgence. Actually, that's what it was called was. Uh, Godzilla Resurgence, yep. if I'm correct, before it became Shin Godzilla. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say that one does, but it's like, I know people are shitting their pants over Ultraman. And after we saw the movie in theaters, I've seen some of our Godzilla friends comment on Facebook saying Shin Kamen Rider is fucking amazing too. And earlier Scott said he looked up, he didn't tell me the scores at all, but he said it has a really good score. Um, I have to go. I, I have to go. I I can't. I gotta go, Godzilla, dude. Like I can't. Go, go, Godzilla. Exactly. <laughs> All right, you guys are both correct. It was Shin Godzilla. <laughs> Fuck yes. So it's two to one now. Yep. So two to one to next. two ties. Yes. So technically, I have three questions, but one of them I can't do now because it was something that we kind of talked about. I'll just bring it up now. Real I quick. might have forgot. Might Those well. ones were obvious ones that I remember. Okay, but. so who directed all three of the Shin films? Oh, I don't remember his fucking name. Oh, Was it um, Shinji Higuchi or Hideko Anno? Hideko Anno. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm going to just cross that one out, too. Okay, yep. Okay. Only so two options is kind of lame, too. Yeah, A little know. bit, I yeah. Know. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's... that's <laughs> couldn't have given me, like, Tokugawa Ayasu or something? Which isn't a real... No, he's just been dead for like a thousand years. Oh, I don't or know. Or Ishiro Honda. Yeah, that too. Yeah, I could have done this. Ish- yep. But, um, okay, next question is, was there two Kamen Riders in the original Kamen Rider series? No. That's decent. Would it be... I want to say yes. I'm going to go with no. Okay. So you're going to say yes and you're going to say no? Yeah. Okay, so it was yes. Okay, I thought so because I think uh, didn't I mention that after we got yes. out of the theater too? Yes. Like, because both of the suits looked pretty familiar to me. I'm not familiar with the show, but both of the suits of Common Rider One and Common Rider Two did look really familiar to me. I was, that's why I asked John afterwards. Like, was there someone a, a predecessor that stepped up and took the mantle? Or something like that, you know? Just because I recognized that the suit was familiar. And that's why I didn't like... I think that's probably why I didn't... Oh, I actually didn't like that fucking light green color <laughs> yeah. either. That shit was ugly. All right. So, the last question that I have is a yes or no question. So, were the augmented um, beings in this film humans? That's a really big question. What do you mean by that? Um, did be- they consider themselves humans? Did other people consider them humans? Were pe- they genetically human? Yes. What the hell do you mean by that? Were they genetically human? I mean, if we're talking strictly about human genes and nothing else, then no. Okay. But that's the whole premise of the art. I was going like, to say, yeah, because it isn't... Re- re- uh, re- even Mariko wasn't completely... I yep. mean, I, I hate... Yeah, because is she a test tube baby? That doesn't make her not human, though. I mean, true, but not uh, not. It means that she doesn't share one of the basic similarities of most humans, but it doesn't make her not human. Would she kind of be a clone? Mm, no. Maybe. Well, Do, I I don't think they say. I yeah, I don't think because so cloning is a really specific process. Yeah. Like real world cloning is a really specific set of. It's a really strict process, but I mean, it might be sci-fi cloning that we don't know about. It might have been implied that that's what um, Midorikawa did to make her, but I don't know for sure. So, so what was the question again? One more Are they human? Genetically Would, human. Genetically human. Yes. Genetically. Like, lab or not lab? That's not the point. I, I guess. Uh, genes are genes, whether they're in a tube or a, a person. But I, person doesn't mean human either. 
Ex- yeah, see? Uh, fuck. Can be, you can be a person and not a human and a human. Oh, right. That is slightly <laughs> tricky. That's slightly tricky. That's I where think. you get in trouble is when you start asking whether or not you can be human and not a person. Exactly. That's where dude. you get in serious trouble. Well, she's not really kind of human because as you guys but she, I would told consider, me, she's like... I would consider her to be a technologically augmented human. But technologically and not biologically, and that's an important distinction in the context of the film and the question, is this person human? Well, what was so it Rurico, all? Rurico, I would say, was fully human, and then on top of that, augmented by technology, because she only has human DNA. If we're if we're defining human as all and only human DNA, then Rurico was human, but none of the augs were, by definition, because the augs all were gene spliced. Yep. I mean, I guess you gave him my answer. And They're GMOs. No, I guess. <laughs> okay. Yep. So you bro for correct on that. Which means Tyler has won with four points. Mike has gotten two, two points. points. Nice, nice. Yeah. Two more points than I wanted. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't say 2.9 the whole fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> For your sake, I'm glad you didn't tell me that beforehand. That's what she said. <laughs> Damn, dude. Did she? Wow. I didn't know that. That could be... Wow. <laughs> Congratulations, Tyler. You have won the game. I know Scott won the... Wait, who did win the last game? I don't remember. I, no, Scott won it. I remember. Oh, okay. Scott, yeah, Scott won it. Man, we got to start making the games where whoever loses has to fucking make the game. And oh. with the tiebreakers, fucking fight it out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. But we do something different all the fucking time. Yeah. So. Yep. So, all right. Cool stuff. Now we get into the next session, which is spicy, spicy news. No, it's called. I witness sexy action, action cool news. I can suck my nuts for that sexy shit. Sexy action cool news. <laughs> Just kidding. So, um, got quite a few articles actually. Quite a few. So. One of them was actually a very, very heavy one that I just found out about, which was the writer's strike that's going on. Well, it's been going on for a few weeks, hasn't it? Yeah. Solidarity to everybody on strike. Yep. Yes. Union strong. And that's something that I was I, I actually just learned about like this past week was the writer's strike because I had I had no idea that was going. Oh, yeah. That's why a lot of shows are being pushed back right now. Shows, movies. Yeah. Or just stopping production because of that it's good shit you got to hit them in the wallet and where's the wallet fatter than in the entertainment industry exactly and that shit doesn't happen without writers don't be a scab remember that never scab never scab Yeah, about the writer strike you cross that line you're an enemy of the workers yep that's happened before yeah it's just now it's happening again because because they're just not getting paid enough it's just it's ridiculous of what's going on where did i put my phone um and got expropriated yeah (laughs) (laughs) and so that's what's going on because um since that's going on that's actually uh affecting the production of spider-man 4 starring tom holland because of the writer's strike too yep it's on pause correct uh currently there's a spider-man 4 coming out yep more importantly than spider-man 4 though we got to remember that putting a hold on our media the media we enjoy is less important than these people having good working conditions yes Yes, exactly thank you mike thank you so fucking our enjoyment as consumers is not important compared to them as people yep no so that's also putting a pause on uh that is in every industry yeah that's that's what's going on with that. It's, there's like a few other ones that oh, yeah. that were being paused, but there was other ones that weren't, which I thought was kind of weird. Which I was just like, okay, well, that's what. Well, yeah, yeah. they're gonna try to funnel the money that they because now they, oh, the yeah. avenues for their money are gonna get stopped up, so they're gonna start funneling it toward where it's not being blocked. Yep, which is fucking crummy as hell. They're always gonna find a way to keep making movies. They'll yep. find scabs. They'll find non-union writers. Mm-hmm. Which is going to be in breach of their contracts with the union writers, but this country has a very, very long and happy history of fucking over union workers and not really caring, mm-hmm. and they like to get away with it. Yep. So, um, the other thing that I did want to mention too is that um, there is a Indiegogo, um, Indiegogo project going on right now, which is starting up a new comic series which is called Sector 7, is going to be a kaiju-related comic series. Um, 
that is uh, currently being written by um, Matthew Boyce and illustrated by Ron um, um, Mosk, uh, Kiki Jr. And the colors are actually being done by Matt Yaki, who is a DC and Marvel um, veteran colorer. And they're working on this project now, and it's being funded on Indiegogo. Uh, the campaign, um, if you guys would like information about this campaign, I, I will po post the article where I got this from um, in the episode description. Uh, next to that, uh, Nintendo is announcing a new sequel for the Nintendo Switch, um, which is supposedly everybody... 1-2 Switch, which uh, was the predecessor of 1-2 Switch, was the first game that was released on Nintendo Switch when it came out back in 2017. They're finally releasing that game, um, which I'm guessing it's going to be connectivity with everyone online and stuff, so it's going to be more interactive. Are they going to have legs, though? Man, I fucking hope they got legs. If they don't, I'm going to be pissed. I mean, the Zucks kind of cornered the market on Avatar. <laughs> Piss you know? on my ass! <laughs> I mean, if you want to be competitive these days, you got to have legs on your avatars. Yeah. Otherwise, you go into the toilet like Meadow where it belongs. <laughs> um, the next thing that I also have to talk about is about Epic Games' uh, new current game that's like a mystery game that's being released for free um, in the month of June. So um, the game is called Midnight Ghost Hunt, which is by Vaulted Sky Games, and... Um, I actually don't know what this game is really about, but I'm going to have to look into it now since it's a free game that's available through the Epic Games Store for everybody to get hands you, on. You read the words Midnight Ghost Hunt out loud and didn't hear Knock Off Phasmophobia? Yes. What? No, actually I did not. No, I didn't. Um, does that not just sound like knockoff Phasmophobia? It kind of does now. <laughs> it kind of, now that you, now that you elaborated <laughs> that, it does sound like that. So. I don't know. I'm not going to play it either way. Yeah. It's just like. Uh, it's just like, oh, fuck. Well, here we go. Now we got another Phasmophobia game. Yeah, it might be better than Phasmophobia. I don't know. Probably has, Have yeah. to talk to our buddy Sam about that because mm -hmm. I don't know jack about Phasmophobia. I haven't played Phasmo in a while, so. Um, now. I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. Uh, ghost hunting game. Ghost, ghost hunting game. Oh, I live that every day in my house. <laughs> <laughs> um, what up, knocker? So <laughs> knocker. <laughs> yeah, he literally pounds like on the fucking roof. Um, he does. It's my little demon. I call him knocker. So, have you guys heard that the Super Mario Brothers movie is now grossing more than Frozen? Yep. Yep. Um, because as of right now... This is the number two all-time animated movie, yes, right? Yes. What's what number one? Fun? Do you know what number one is? Um, I actually don't. Oh, The Lion King. Of course it is. Yeah, The Lion Why King. Why the Which one? Oh. The original animated what kind of question is that? I thought there was more than one Lion King. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is, but you think those are going to surpass the OG Lion King? I don't know what the fuck people want to watch. Dog. I don't understand people. That movie's as old as I am. I... Okay. It should be Nightmare Before Christmas, though, but continue. Well, um, yeah, the number one is uh, is supposedly... Oh, God. What the fuck, you fucking ads? God. Yeah, what the fuck is that? Fucking ads. Yeah. Turn it off! Potato porn. Yeah, potato porn. No, John watches Dino porn now. No Nintendo okay. shilling. But yeah, no. So they're saying that it's it's gonna it's already surpassing uh, Frozen because Frozen has earned about one point two nine billion dollars when it released. So deep down, I kind of want it to pass Lion King, but I kind of don't either, though. Yeah. Yes, but I mean, if anything, I'm glad that Lion King and Super Mario Brothers are like the two best animated movies of all time. <laughs> two highest grossing, not necessarily the two best. Shh. <laughs> oh, that's true though yeah true but <laughs> the highest grossing movie of all time could just be some like random shit that appeals to the lowest common denominator mm, very true gotta remember that revenue does not necessarily reflect quality look I can't speak without swimming <laughs> my bad I wanted this one smokes let's go but um the last thing that I do want to talk about is the return of the director of Terrifier, which is now producing Terrifier 3. Yeah! Daniel Leon! Wait, the clown Terrifier? Yes. Fuck oh, fuck yes. yeah, let's go. Fuck Bang. yeah, dude! With, Marathon with 
a bigger budget. <laughs> so it uh, and it's supposed will, to be more gory, which will be better. So they are now talking about that the budget is supposed to have. Oh, it's gonna be big. You know how much movie that second movie made, dude? Yeah, no, the second film made fifteen it's the million highest worldwide. Highest grossing independent horror film of all time. They said that their budget for Terrifier three will be about a quarter of a million dollars. So two hundred fifty thousand dollars is what's budgeted for Terrifier three. The only thing I, I don't want it to be as long as a second movie. I we haven't even sec we wa- we didn't watch the second one, have we? I've seen both of them. Oh, I have not seen the second one. No, oh, I've man. seen both of them. I've only seen the first one. Let's talk. All right, you and me, me and Mike. I absolutely fucking love Terrifier two, but it is just. A little bit too long. I think most movies are too long. Just <laughs> like, dude, honestly, there's nothing I'd really take out of it. But when I I watched it with a friend not too long ago, and I remember being like, "All right, this has got to end kind of soon." And, it still <laughs> and I knew where it was gonna because I've watched it before when I watched it with my friend. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, there's still, like, at least, like, another 45 minutes left. And it's like, oh, well, I kind of wish this was a bit shorter so we can go fuck off and drink or something. Maybe yeah. that's just my anticipation wanting to go get fucked up, Maybe. too. But but I do get that sense with a lot of movies, and a lot of the time I do wish they were shorter. Kind of like this movie a little bit, Common Rider. I definitely think this movie could have been a lot shorter than yeah. it was. But what would we take out but of then this movie? There's, there's, that's a good question because there's a lot of stuff I would want to put in, too. Like, yeah. This, like we've mentioned how Scorpion Og was basically just murked right away. Yeah. Like she got maybe two minutes. You know, of even Not even screen time, but of consideration, she got maybe two minutes. Including when they brought her back in a mention because they use her oh, venom the bo- to kill Wasp We never Wasp brought Og. that up. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Wasp Og is like hardcore and really hard to kill but they shoot her with a bullet infused with scorpion augs venom yep and that's that's the end of her relevance like i, I could completely have seen... forgot about that yeah and it's well because she's not even like a big part no of it. it's uh, she is unfortunately forgettable and i remember leaning over to you in the theater like when the fuck is scorpion supposed yeah you to didn't even back? realize she was dead no i didn't <laughs> i thought she was just having an extreme orgasm yeah no she did and then that she died in the process <laughs> That's probably a part where I was paying attention to the action more than the dialogue, so yeah. I didn't catch it. No, she died off screen, too. Dude, I literally asked you like three times in the movie, like, what did I miss? No, when she comes and dies at the same time, <laughs> you hear... That's what she said! When she comes and dies at the same time, you hear that over one of the organization's a organization agent's micro- um, walkie-talkies. She doesn't even die on screen. Okay, yeah, but yeah, that. so this is what that's what I think though. I do think we probably could have taken some stuff out. I don't know because I'm biased. I don't like all the fucking jumping and all the flips and all the fucking like nineteen thousand years spent with your foot extended in the air. I think it's fucking <laughs> stupid, and oh, we that, could have lost all of it that and not lost se- the movie. That fight scene between the two. I just mean in general. Masqueraders. The fast. Well, it's pretty ridiculous. It's just so much, but so much of it's unnecessary. Wait, there was a scene. Uh, was that the wasp? With the watch, but it was like yeah. fast, super fast. That motion. was cool. That was really that was cool. pretty cool. We didn't bring that up. That part was badass. This is that's part. That, I mean, I've mentioned a couple times. Waspog can get oh, it, and that's part of why. And I didn't even bring up where I got confused in this fucking movie when they went to her lair first, and then they fucking left. We talked about it. It was a tactical back. retreat. They had to figure out. So they were trying to figure out where. We talked about it after the movie, but not on yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they go in and they're looking for a server. A computer server in Wasp Og's hideout that supposedly is part of how she's controlling yep, uh, her slave army, despite her saying something about pheromones. I don't know what the com- maybe it was a metaphor for the computer signal, but um, they were supposed to go find it. Hongo was supposed to look. Uh, our common writer was supposed to go and listen for it yep. while uh, Ruriko distracted her because they were friends before she became Wasp Og. Yep. But Wasp Og is just a spiteful bitch who just wants Ruriko to suffer. Like mm-hmm. that's all she wants. She wants her to cry. She she's like trying to kill Hongo to make her cry. Yep. Not to kill Hongo, to defeat him as an enemy, to hurt Ruriko. She can still get it, though. <laughs> but yeah, um, but those... yeah, there was a plan, and yeah, yeah. at one point, they kind of are going to go toe-to-toe with her, and then she starts summoning up her civilian army. That She kind of plays the, oh, are you really going to hurt them angle? Mm-hmm. Like, come on, you guys are the good guys. You're not going to punch through civilians to get me, right? So they do retreat. Both because they don't want to, they're they're cornered in a room full of people that they don't that like a ringing phone, want to hurt. What the hell was that? I'm sorry, that's my bad. Oh, <laughs> but then they also um, 
the retreat to try to get a better angle so that Hongo can destroy the computer server, which he does mm-hmm. by crashing his bike into it. Yeah. Or no, no, he doesn't. He just jumps straight through the building, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yeah, he just like falls straight. Like, le- again, the stupid fucking leg out. I'm going to destroy what I'm going to impact pose. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he kicks through the building. Um, kicks through the building. <laughs> yeah, that part kind of confused me at first, too. I was like, why didn't you kill her? Me, he's like, I don't want to kill you. Like, yeah, this is also a part of the movie where Hongo hasn't really In my Clint Eastwood voice, I don't want to kill you, bitch. No, I'm, just <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, this is also part of uh, Hongo's character development where he really isn't leaning into the I'm going to do what I have to do to be Kamen Rider yet. So he's really, really hesitant when it comes yep. to fighting uh, first Spider-Og. He gets his ass kicked by Spider-Og because he doesn't want to fight him and he's not really familiar with his powers yet. Yep. And then... Waspog happens soon after that. They, uh, the common co- at this point there isn't a second common rider, but Hongo doesn't fight uh, Scorpion Og again. He again the main hero doesn't even get to fight Scorpion Og, so she's really just written off as a villain. But um, where's it going with that? Oh, we're just, no way. We're, no. Just, we're just talking about that because of um, uh, we're because oh, we got yeah, mentioned where in it happens discussion. in the movie. But yeah. yeah, he's not really about punching through villains yet yep so that's part of what i think why they don't take out <laughs> part of the cause of your complaint that they don't take out Waspog right away is because neither one of them is really hardened for what they have to do yet grotico tries to act like she is but she's not she always she, her her catchphrase she is, says I've she doesn't have any friend but that's her closest friend she's ever had she's yep. the closest thing to a friend yeah yeah is that's what she, right. is yes. what she calls her yeah to her face she tells Waspog that she has no friends but she still doesn't want to have to kill her mm-hmm but even and this is even after um wasp Og does stab her sword into hongo to hurt Rudigo. nothing to him yeah she's like, she's like why did it stop halfway through dumb <laughs> anyway <laughs> that's all the news that i actually had so oh yeah we were still talking about news yeah yeah <laughs> we got a couple things what do you got apparently they've wrapped filming on the new hellboy movie oh shit yeah um i don't want to be that excited just because that last Hellboy movie sucked ass. Sorry, Neil Marshall. I love Dog Soldiers. I love The Descent. Ooh, The Descent slaps. Yes. Dude, The Descent fucks hard. Mm-hmm. But The Lair, the lair kind of sucked. I'm I don't think I saw lie. The Lair. It's his newest one. Mm. I definitely um, didn't see it then. It might be on Shudder, but I, I know it's on Amazon Prime, though. Dude, my Shudder subscription is just sitting on the shelf collecting dust right now. Dude, mine too, kind of. I knew. The only thing I've watched recently was the Chainsaw Awards for Fangoria. Yeah, I watched the first 30-something minutes of Wayseta. I know. I I've been slacking on my Joe Bob, too. I need to catch up on my Joe Bob. Mm-hmm. But um, the other thing I have is that Robert Eggers take on Nosferatu just wrapped filming also. Oh, man. Oh, man. I cannot wait to fucking see that movie. Yes. For one, that's Lily Rose Depp. Big, I think that's going to be her big movie. She just had a show. I, I can't remember what that show is called. But um, Bill Skarsgård, I believe, is Nosferatu. Yes. Which I think is going to be sweet. Originally, I think he wanted William Dafoe. <laughs> To be Nosferatu, but William Defoe is still in the movie. A favorite of the show. Oh man, yes, yes. Listen to my chain smoking voice. Yeah. No, I'm just, <laughs> just get. Um, no, I'm really, I'm excited for that because he's been, he's been wanting to do that movie for a while. And if I remember correctly, I think I heard this on the Straight Chillin' podcast. They said that um, Robert Eggers actually, before he started making movies, directed a play. Uh, I don't know if he was in high school or if it was college or something, but he directed a play of Nosferatu and wanted it to be exactly like the original oh, movie. Man. And I think that's what got the attention for him being a film director because his first movie is The Witch. Which oh okay oh man I didn't know the name but I know the movie the, yeah, yeah the I witch. didn't know the, I didn't know the Robert Eggers and I didn't know his name but I definitely know the witch The Witch The Lighthouse and oh, the Northman yeah. yep. dude Yes Let's fucking Go! Oh, yeah. I want. I want to see Nosferatu with those chops. Absolutely, I do too, man. That's a fucking. I dude. He is. Oh. The, the North Mang was. I liked it, but it's 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 the Lion King though. The North Mang is yeah. the Lion King, but the Lion King is from Hamlet, and apparently, what I've heard from watching the North Mang that Hamlet is derived from 
a Nordic tale that's not actually documented, but is the tale of Hamlet. Like mm-hmm. I said, there's only three stories. Everything else is remixes. <laughs> Dude, everything is a remix. Everything is a remix. Everything is. You were actually quoting, or you're not quoting if you don't know him, but um, Randy from the Straight Show podcast says that all the time, oh. that everything is a remix. Oh, yeah. No, I've never heard that podcast before, but that's it's true. Definitely it's check true. that podcast out. It's my favorite podcast of all time. All right. Especially if you love horror movies, because they're just a horror movie podcast. So. Sweet. Yeah, them and a cut above horror. Yeah, usually as far as media about horror movies, I, I usually uh, gravitate toward the Scaredy Cats YouTube channel, which is pretty fun. Pretty fun. Usually a comedic take. Really dry, sarcastic humor, so a lot of deadpan delivery. I think it's hilarious. What is that? Scary, what? Scaredy Cats. Is it just Scaredy Cats podcast? Or? No, it's a YouTube channel. Oh, okay. I'll check that out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I think that's all the news I got, honestly. Yeah, so... Um, I have no news. The news makes me want to die. <laughs> Me too. Well, let's uh, let's wrap up with um, what well, we already did voicemails. Uh, song of the week. Yeah, I don't really have a song for this movie, quite honestly, and I was gonna skip it, but then I remembered as I was taking a piss, what like <laughs> ten minutes ago, twenty yeah. minutes ago, that Rancid put out a new album yesterday, June second, called Tomorrow Never Comes. So I just want to kind of help promote that album and mention their actually the first single that came out last month when they were promoting the album, which mm-hmm. is Tomorrow Never Comes. Okay. That song rules. I like that song a lot. I listened to half the album yesterday. I haven't listened to the full album yet, mm-hmm. but I was digging it. I like the album. I love Rancid. It's their 10th album, and they just are celebrating 30 years this year as being a band also. Nice. Nice. So check out Rancid, Tomorrow Never Comes. Um, like I said, I got to finish it myself. But from what I've heard, I've, I've listened maybe more than half. I was at work, but I just wanted to go back to my Trailer Park Boys podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I'm probably going to listen to it tomorrow just when I have time to smoke some weed and just get high and just zone out in some tunes, yeah. you know. Like yeah. that's, that's what I love. I love to just smoke and just zone out and some lyrics and the tunes of new music all the time absolutely so tomorrow never comes by rancid released june 2nd 2023 did i mention the date that we're recording this or no no all right well this is june 3rd 2023 my bad i've been slacking on that shit i guess which also you have talked about what's coming up which is the first anniversary of the podcast series yeah that's in three days oh actually you know what is an anniversary today hmm. <laughs> let me clear my throat <clears throat> what is it war plot hey. has officially been a band three years today hey. Hey. Sick. june 3rd 2023 we started on june 3rd 2020 during the pandemic <laughs> during a really hard time in all of our lives and i'm fucking thankful and grateful that we started this fucking band and we're actually doing a great job and people are liking us from around everywhere man everywhere and uh shout out to steve shout out to steve from fucking waxing the porpoise for fucking digging my band dude like that's awesome you checked it out and fucking you actually like it um you can find more songs on youtube just look up war plot i mean I we I think for actual audio tracks we have the music video for yep. uh, Thieves, and, and then uh, we have an audio video for Waiting for War yep. and My Disease. But if you scroll through, I think you can find two videos of Dead Body, uh, one video of um, Melt Away, and I think there's one more out there, but I can't remember right now. Actually, the recent show we just played with the TM, T, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yeah. pizza party. Um, Corey, Corey over at Art is Dead, which he's going to be at the show we're about to go to. Um, he posted two videos of us playing. Oh, he posted Scum fucking Dead Body. Nice. Which I'm a little embarrassed on that because the guys kind of messed up the end and I jumped up and was like, I jumped up and fucking hit the cord, but the guys weren't on point. I was like, fuck! What are you guys doing, like, fuck? But, yeah, if you just look up War Plot, one word, just one word, War Plot, you can find whatever we have on there that people post of us. But, yeah, dude, three years today, June 3rd. And then Punk Set Cinema will be one year in three days. In June 6th. June 6th. 
Well, so, technically, we've been a podcast since 2019. We have. We just had to revise this podcast series. I mean, we've been doing this a long... We've been doing this for a few years now, but professionally, this series has been one year running. Quote, professionally. Professional amateurs. We but are not professional amateurs. I wasn't dragged to another city to be professional. <laughs> no, you were not. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, true, Scott. Professionals do get paid. But um this is really something that I, I really do appreciate with uh the friends I have here for doing this for a year and for the listeners that we have out there who have been supporting us since our start from twenty nineteen as well, seeing the change in this podcast series and as well as uh, just sticking around for the episodes too, and thank you as well for continuing to listen to the series. Um, as of right now, uh, Super Mario Brothers uh, movie review is actually the most listened podcast really? episode to date now, Fuck. with uh, two hundred listens. I'm surprised it's not Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> I I know, but it, that will probably be after. But yeah, it's just um. Mario Brothers was probably something that was up people's alleys and they wanted an insight yeah. on it first, which thank you because that's something that I was not really seeing that to popping up in popularity, but yeah. Yeah, keep stroking us. <laughs> keep stroking <laughs> the caucus. <laughs> the cockles of our hearts. Oh my god. No, I just want to say thank you guys for having me on too. I've been on three times now. It's always been a real fucking blast. Well, Come over here. And everyone's see. always welcome on. Yeah. yeah. It's always been cool. Especially with Scott. That, that one guy. Which guy? That one guy. Sh- this guy. Oh. This guy. I was about to say his full name. I was like, I probably should not say that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you. Literally, thank you. Um, nah, fuck you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Hope your podcast sucks. Fuck you, Johnny. <laughs> fuck you, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Bernard. <laughs> but uh, before we officially wrap this up, let me do the plugs real quickly. Take that shit out. So, if you guys would like to listen to us <laughs> or listen to previous episodes, go and search Punks at the Cinema on YouTube and on Spotify as well. We are available on a majority of platforms, Apple Podcast, uh, Amazon Podcast, or music actually, um, Google Google Play Podcast, just anywhere they, if you search us on the web, just search Punks at the Cinema. Um, and if you guys would like to follow our social media, uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at username PATC podcast. And, uh, definitely leave us a review. Give us a follow because that would mean a lot if you can do so. And another thing too, is that if you guys would like to leave us a rock and voicemail or, you know, you want us to, you know, chat up or respond to your voicemail, um, uh, live on our recording, please leave it at 262-288-0863. Once again, that's at 262-288-0863. That bot sounded like a ringing phone, Terrence. It sure did, Philip. Oh, wait, that is the phone. Hello? Dance, this is Scott. Ah, oh, hey, it's Scott. Tell him he's a smelly bastard. Philip says hello, Scott. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> So, yeah, please leave it at that phone number, 262-288-0863. We will respond it to you live if you would like to, like, you know, leave us a comment of, you know, something that is from a previous episode or as well as, you know, if you want to say hi or fuck you, John, just leave it for, you, you know, John. for us. You should definitely call and say fuck you, John. Then, then just leave it at that voicemail. Um, if you have business inquiries, uh, definitely leave us an email at kinotalk at yahoo.com. K A N O T A L K at yahoo.com. We've got to change that. Well, I understand, but we gotta, we gotta, we gotta make it with. Oh, the yeah, you gotta get it the, up to date with the times. You gotta turn it to yeah. butt plug emporium. <laughs> butt plug emporium. Dude, that's gonna be the email. Butt plug emporium at gmail.com. Oh my god, that sounds tight. <laughs> Man, <laughs> tight butthole. Oh, no. But uh, did you wanna? <laughs> Did you want to plug in the band again? Sure, of course I do. Warplot, I am in Warplot, and we suck. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Fall uh, Warplot. Apparently we rule. That's what people are saying. Pretty fucking good. Not even in town, but around the country now, I guess. Um, we are playing Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, as of this recording, next week 
Saturday, which will be June 10th. Yep. Which this will be airing on uh, June 7th? Yes, I Wednesday. believe so. Yeah. So if anyone's in Indiana, which I know one person that is, I really hope to fucking see you. But I, I understand if you can't make it out. But, yeah, we'll be in Indiana. We'll be at the Melody Inn. We'll be jamming out fucking um, hardcore. What's going on with that show that was supposed to be in Milwaukee? Uh, it's not happening. And neither the one in Chicago? No, yeah, a lot of shit happened, so uh, we're, just, we're not doing them, I guess. Okay. So. Yeah, that's a bit of a bummer, but I'm kind of glad I don't want to play three shows in a fucking <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Um, But we do have July 1st at the port. Yeah, baby! With Death Wish and Retox. Yeah. Hey, nice. And then on July 29th, we're going to oh, be shit. at UPT, where I'm about to go right after this fucking recording. Oh, shit. That's going to be that day? Oh, fuck. July 29th. Yeah, that's my that's my uh, my nephew's birthdays. Ah, oh, so I might try to come to that. And we will be playing with our friend Lollygagger. Ooh. Yep. That's actually UPT is the first time we played with them. And you know my little Switchblade Nintendo Switch pin I yeah. have I got that from the base oh player. dude hell yeah yeah so I, I wear that with pride all the time dude, I, yes. I love that pin so yeah we'll be here in Kenosha July 1st at the port with Death Wish and then July 29th with Wally Gagger so come check us out and then once again June 10th in Indianapolis Indiana fucking anyone listening that's in that area come hang out let's fucking get drunk and let's have a good <laughs> fucking time man let's go oh and another yeah. thing before i fucking forget this you can watch us live at punk punk rock punk rock night dot com and they play the live streams the night of the show so you can watch us in indianapolis even if you can't make it to the show you can watch us live at punk rock night dot com and watch us live playing i don't know i think we're second so the show starts at nine o'clock which will be Eastern time because yeah, I always, Eastern. I do I always forget Indiana is yep. an hour ahead of us. Yep. And every time we drive down there, we forget that. And we're like, oh, we still got like two hours. And then we get across the, that state line. It's like, oh, fuck. We have a fucking hour to get there. <laughs> like, oh, shit. So, yeah. So if you're Eastern time, it'll be just watch from nine o'clock because that will be the first band. I'm sure we'll be on at like 945 or something. Um, Central, 8 o'clock, Mountain Time, 7 o'clock, East yep. Coast, 6 o'clock. So yep. just check all that out, you know? I mean, if you're also around the world, well, I don't know your time, so just, just fucking watch out for that shit. <laughs> yeah, War Plot, check us out. Um, no. I'm not doing much for <laughs> Tyler Nightmares Late Night Horror Show, but I, I have plans. I've got some plans, but I'm not going to announce them here. And I also have plans for this show and a network in general. Yeah, but I'm not going to announce them until I have that um, beer brewing in my brain more and it's fermented and ready to be drunk. But um, I'm going to talk to these boys because actually a movie I want to pick is going to discuss that, which... Oh, oh boy. Speaking of which... Hey, Scott! What? Are we going to do your movie next or mine? Yours. We, we want to <laughs> do mine? Yeah. All right. So... When we come back, we're not going to record next week, so I'll be in Indianapolis. John will be in Chicago. Yep. So we can't record next off. week. <laughs> but when we come back, boys, I'm ready to do this movie. We're going to do the Swear Net movie. Oh, damn. Which is going to be a big influence in where I'm going to talk about branching this network out more. Okay. You can shut your mouth, Scott. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Nah, but yeah, when we get when we if if anyone doesn't know, Swear Not is is the Trailer Park Boys, yep. but but it's not a Trailer Park Boys movie. It's the actual actors that are the Trailer Park Boys, but they're playing themselves. It's on Netflix. You can watch it on Netflix for free if you have Netflix, obviously. Yep. But that's that's the one I want to do next. We still have to do the Unbearable Way movie because I do want to do that movie. But if Scott Scott just said we can do my movie, so I want to do Swear Night. Okay. I want to do the fucking Swear Night movie. Okay, cool, tight, tight titties, tight titties, and well, we're gonna be exiting out of the show because we got a show to go and check out. So, thank you once again. If you guys have any closures, oh, I was just gonna say eat shit, Kenosha. 
Whoa! <laughs> I mean, yeah, Kenosha can kind of eat shit, but I love this town. <laughs> Not anybody who works at the spot, though. Thank you. <laughs> Whoa, I just had the spot yesterday. And yeah, those so some, did we. Those some good. Did you really? Yeah. Yesterday? We dropped yeah. in about 10, 15 last night. Oh, last night. I was there at like 5 o'clock yesterday. Oh. Yeah, dude, shout out to anybody who works at the spot. Dude, man. for you real. You guys slap so fucking yes. hard, and you guys work so hard out there, man. Whoever makes those fucking double cheeseburgers. Dude, yeah. Oh, my fuck. You deserve a medal for that. You're going to make me a real-life Randy. I'm going to tell you <laughs> that, dude. But thank you again, listeners, for listening to this episode and sticking with the community. Seriously, it really means a lot. Follow the social media, PATC Podcast. Follow War Plot. And uh, definitely continue supporting us, and we really do appreciate it. So I think that's it for our closure then, huh? You want to say bye, Mike? Bye. Bye. Stay psycho, motherfuckers. <laughs> you guys are hella stupid. I knew you would fall for that. Oh, no, dude. You tricked us, Cartman. That's right, I did. You guys are hella stupid. You guys are hella lame. You guys are hella dumb. Hella, hella, hella. Damn it. <laughs>